at this time, please welcome to the ring the man responsible for the Strong Island Pipeline Series, the creator of the Sick Park Championship, Harris Christian Bassley! I'm Randy G, along with Jose Guzman. How many titles did you win in the Golden Gloves? Uh, I actually just lost in the finals, and after that, I just turned. And, and that was it. You that lost. Was it. Didn't you ever want to get back, or was it just something that uh, I gave it that one good shot? Yeah. L let's listen to promoter Christian Vasquez. The fighters, without you, this is impossible. You know, this is a vision I had to give these athletes a big stage to perform on for all the hard work and dedication they have in the gym. Um, nothing like being on a big stage to perform and showcase your skills. So here we are tonight, Strong Island Fight Night Series 2 and the Six Barrel Championships. Let's have a good time. Let's go. Right. Well, and we're going to have a prayer from the President Ray Quadrado. Thank you, Christian. I want to acknowledge you, Christian. I want to thank you for this opportunity you've given to Metro and the boxers in USA Boxing Metro. But most of all, I want to thank our Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity you've given us today, Lord. We thank you for bringing us here safe. I ask that you keep us safe, both in blessing this structure, blessing this ring, blessing our participants, Lord, keeping us safe throughout the combative and competitive experience. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity, and we ask that you also keep us safe on our way home. Lord, without you, none of this would be possible. We thank you for your blessings in your sweet name, Lord. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Ray Quadrado and Christian Esquiz. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Strong Island Fight Night Series 2 starts right now with our opening contest. Taking place in the 139-pound huh? elite division. The winner will be the number one contender for the division six borough championship. Approaching the blue corner at this time, here is Steven Mojica. Definitely from the two minute round, you expect these guys to just come out and start fighting right away. And ladies and gentlemen, his opponent in our opening contest, approaching the red corner at this time, here is Sam Ida Chico.
two minutes each round, 139 pound elite fighters. Strong Island Fight Night Series 2 takes place in the 139 pound elite division. The winner, the number one contender for the division six borough championship belt. It is sponsored by C4 Energy, the champion of energy drinks. Introducing the competitors first, boxing at the blue corner. Representing Diaz Boxing, here is Steven Mojica! And his opponent, competing out of the red corner, representing Vamos Boxing, here is Sam Idatico! Referee Andy Adele brings the fighters together for our first bout of the evening. Out of the blue corner, it is Steven Mojica. Out of the red corner, Samuel Ayedichiko. Hey, Randy, I don't, I don't know if you remember about the last show, but remember the Samuel fight, it was very entertaining, so he's a very entertaining guy, very animated, so I expect this fight to be very exciting. Ayadiko is definitely the taller fighter. He should be standing in the outside boxing, sticking his jab, moving. You know, just keep it from the outside. Mojica is definitely making it a little bit tough for him. You know, pushing, pushing the pace, getting in the way inside, using his elbow. In a two-minute round, certainly guys who were in tip-top shape and used to even boxing three-minute rounds, they could really set a fast pace, can't they? You know, in two minutes, you know, you just got to get in there and just let your hands go, you know, try to do as much, as, as much work as possible to win the round. I think he's doing good work from the outside with his jab. He just got to keep it at that range. He got to keep it from the outside. You know, make it, make it hard for Steven. Right there, he needs to keep it in the middle. Steven Mojica is standing straight up. He's got his chin up in the air. And he got nailed with a shot. And remember, in the amateurs, if you take a good, clean head shot, they will step in and give you a standing eight count. 100%. Oh, beautiful right hand by Mojica. You know, you actually said something interesting earlier. You told me bo amateur boxing is like playing tag. You know, you want to touch the other person more than they touch you. So, but these guys right here, they're just going in there and they're just going. Good round. You know, it was a great round. Nobody really controlled the round too much, but I like uh, how a Mojica... Landed a clean, a little bit of cleaner punches and, and backed up uh, Idiko in, in this round. So I have to give it 10-1, 10-9 to Mojica. So if you're scoring at home, give 10 points to the winner of the round, nine or less to the loser. Here we go, round number two, scheduled for three rounds. Now, you would think that, you know, uh, Adiko being the taller fighter, he would keep it in the middle of the ring, using his range, moving side to side like he's doing right now. See, if he does that, uses his jab, he'll win the round very easily. But like you said, he has his head straight, straight up, chin up in the air, and he's going to be caught every time uh, Mojica steps in and throws an overhand right. Oh, beautiful right hand by Adiko. Referee Andy Adele, veteran referee Andy Adele. He actually got to ref some of my amateur fights. <laughs> Always does a great job, but a firm upholder of the rules. 
I say but because there are some referees who do let guys get away with a little bit of rough stuff, whatever. Once they're inside and the rough stuff starts, you'll see Andy get right in the way it's supposed to be done. But he does let them fight their way out of it. Yeah, that's actually what's going on right now. Mojica, every time he steps in the inside, he's doing a lot of good work. And, and Adika is just standing straight up. Oh, but but he right here. That was nice beautiful work. work from Adiko. That was beautiful work. Nice work on the inside by the man in the red head guard, Stephen Mojica. Uh, Mojica looks a little tired to me. He looks like he's slowing down, and Adiko is actually picking it back up. Very competitive opening bat here in the SBC Championship Strong Island Boxing. Just what a way to start this show. Beautiful. These guys, they definitely want to win. Nobody wants to lose tonight. Mojica pouring on the pressure, and Sal digging in, fighting right back. There's the bell. Right down to the wire they go. And now the final two minutes of this bout coming up. You know, Mojica. Round three. And Mojica ended the, wrong, the round strong, but Adiko controlled most of the round. So I have to give it 10-9 to Adiko. We're getting set for the final That's round of this three-round, 139-pound elite bout. One, two, one, two. Ready. Final round. Let's see who wants it more. Aya De Chico starts it right off with a hard right hand, putting on the pressure. Maybe he feels he's a little bit behind here. So far, I have it one round apiece. I think whoever wins this round takes the fight. Beautiful work by Adiko. One thing that I like that the red corner is doing Adiko is that all his punches are not hard. This time, this time he just let his hands go. He just touches. But that was a beautiful right hand from Mojica. Mojica trying to punch on the inside with little taps to the cheek. I think Andy Adele might break them up now. He's telling him work. He said, okay, stop. And they step back. And they meet again. There's no boxing here. This is pure slugging. This is slugging right here. Nice left hand upstairs. That left uppercut to the body by Mojica. Beautiful jab. I just wish Idiko fought more at his range. You know, he's, ooh, beautiful left hook. Oh, Misses some of those shots on the inside. Nice body work by Mojica. Mojica is doing the better work in the inside. But he's backing up to the ropes. That's not a place to be. Both guys just trading. <laughs> They're just trading. They, they want to win bad. You know, sometimes when a, an opening bout gets off to a slow start, it, the fans almost start falling asleep. This is the opening bout, and their adrenaline is already going. If this is any indication of what we are in for, I'm telling you, you and I are not going to have a voice by the end of the <laughs> night. This is going to be a great night of boxing. What a bout. What a bout. I wouldn't even know how to score that last round. What about you? I think that Mojica took that last round. I gave him the last two rounds of the bout. I've got it 29 to 28 for the man fighting out of the blue corner. I agree with you. I, I Dico actually trying to redeem himself because in the la last time we were here, he actually lost a close decision. So 
He's trying to get back in the winning column. Let's see who wins this one. I've got a 29, 28. You got 29, 28. You got Mojica winning. I got, I've got Mojica winning as well, 29, 28. Let's see. Let's see if the judges have it scored the same way that you and I do. Two minute rounds, and it was a rousing three round fight of two minutes apiece. You don't get a, an opening bout m with much more action than that one. That was a great way to start the night. And we have a long night tonight. Here comes the announcement. Let's see. Magnificent Matt Compitello. Ladies and gentlemen. The ringside judges have reached a split decision. It figures. The winner, by way of split decision, boxing out of the red corner, Sam Ida Chico. No, it was a lot of close rounds, so I wonder what the judges were seeing. But it was a great fight. It was close. I I'm not mad at the decision at all. So Samuel Ayadichiko, the winner in that bout, 139-pound elite class. Oh, would I like to see a rematch down the road one day. Here at Strong Island Fight Night Series 2, is a J.O. Championship bout taking place in the 156 pound division. It is brought to you by Long Island Clean Water. Long Island Clean Water, go to their booth, schedule your free and home test. See how toxic your water is and let them install your filtration system. Your water makes you nervous, call Long Island Clean Water Service. Been here on Clean Water since 1985. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the competitors first approach in the blue corner at this time, Terrence Daniel Tony! Garden here in Patchogue, Long Island, New York, for the second installment of Strong Island Boxing SBC Championship. Begins way in the red corner at this time. Here is Jaden Harvey. I'm excited to see Jaden Harvey. Here comes again. the blue corner, Daniel Torres, at a Strong Island Boxing. Fighting out of the blue corner. This one is 156 pound Junior Olympic Championship. And he's going up against Jaden Harden out of Native Boxing. I, I'm good. Actually excited to see Jaden Harvey again. You know he fought in the last show. Uh, very exciting, young kid. He switches a, ba a lot, left from lefty to righty. I just found out why he does that. He's a former Taekwondo national champion. 
So that's why he switches a lot from left to the righty. So definitely excited to see him again. Very talented, very talented kid. Has a bright future for sure. So you see Jaden Hardy coming out as a southpaw. Have you seen him boxing much before? No, I just saw him in the last show. Okay. Where he, fought, he actually got the victory, you know, and I noticed he switches a lot from lefty to righty, from lefty to righty. And I was wondering, I'm like, why, why is he doing that? I spoke to his father a little bit. He told me he, he was actually a national Taekwondo champion. So, you know, it should be a good fight. So Jaden Hardy in the red, white, and blue trunks. Oh, beautiful right hand by Torres. And his opponent, Daniel Torres, had a strong island boxing. You know, when you have a, a boxer versus a, 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 a brawler, you know, as the brawler, you want to push the fight, you want to push him back, you want to make the boxer feel uncomfortable, especially when you have a guy that's switching from left to right a lot. You know, you don't want to let them think. I found that with a lot of amateur boxers, and this one is a 156 Junior Olympic Championship. I found that the guys who put on the pressure, sometimes they think pressure is going to win them the fight, but it's got to be effective pressure. They got to keep that pressure on. They yes, throw. exactly. Right now, uh, Torres is landing a lot of big shots. You know, he is landing a good uh, straight right hand to the top. He's definitely the stronger guy. You know, what I don't see a lot from Jaden Harvey, yes, he has good foot movement, but I don't see a lot of head movement from him. That's why he keeps getting caught with that straight right hand and that left hook. You can tell Daniel Torres has heavy hands. Yes, and Jaden Hardy actually did the wrong thing that time. He stood right in front of Torres, and he got nailed with a solid right hand. I have to say, Torres, uh, for me, dominated that round. So I got a 10-9 for Torres. There are 18 bouts on tonight's card. 10 of them are for the SBC Championship. The Sixth Borough Championship started by Christian Vasquez. Yeah. He has turned this into one of the top amateur tournaments, not on Long Island, not in New York, but across the country. Everybody is talking about the SBC tournament. And I, and I love Kristen calling my home, Long Island, Strong Island. Strong Island, for sure. You know, ever since this, uh, this, show, the, this belt came out, this is what all the young kids are looking forward to, to, to fighting in. You know, I hear everybody, I want that Strong Island belt. I want that Strong Island belt. And, you know, he's always put on great shows, as you can see. This is only the second bout of the night, and it, they've both been so exci exciting so far. Now, if you're in the corner of both guys, let's first put you in the corner of Jaden Harvey. Harvey, he comes back to the corner. What do you tell him after what you saw in that first one? I would tell Jaden, you know, use your footwork. Move, move your head side to side. Keep popping your jab and start using your feints because right now he's standing just right, right in front of, of Torres. And Torres is just um, throwing that straight right hand all day. Move to your right. Take the right hand away from Torres. But he, see, right now he just, he just switched. He, keep, he switched from righty to lefty again. And stay away from the ropes. You need to stay away from the ropes. Okay, and you're in the corner of Torres. Come back to the corner. What do you tell him? Keep doing exactly what you're doing. Keep pressing him back. Make it rough. Keep throwing that right hand. Make a move to your right hand and make it rough. I would just tell him to work the body a little bit, you know. I haven't seen no body work from Torres yet. But so far, he's, he's winning the round. He's the stronger guy. Do you think a lot of amateur boxers are afraid to throw body shots? Because historically, a lot of times I've seen guys be almost robbed in a fight when they've landed so many body shots, and it's almost like the very effective and, and dramatic headshots that get counted, not the body shots. Do you see that? 
You, you know what I think it is? The, the, the art of the body shot is not taught a lot nowadays. And, um, you know, these young kids, they, they, they got to learn that, you know, sometimes going to the body will make the fight so much easier for you. You know, and a lot of trainers are not teaching that nowadays. That, you know, it's, it's great to go to the body because it makes the fight easier. That's another great round for Torres. I got a ten, another 10-9 ten, round for Torres. Yep. So both of us have Torres up by two points, 20 to 18. And now the whole thing changes. You are the man who's in that red corner. You're Jaden Harvey. You come back to the corner. Your corner has to know you're down. What do you tell him? I, if, you know, Harvey's a boxer, so right now you're going to have to abandon being a boxer. You're going to have to go over there, and you're going to have to push the fight. You know, you're going to have to go, let your hands go. Try to land something big. Try to hurt your opponent. That's what I would tell Harvey right now. You're losing. You're down 2-0. You need a big round. Let's see what happens. This is it. Third and final round of this 156-pound junior Olympic bout. Oh, that was beautiful one-two from Harvey. But again, Torres just keeps landing that big right hand right down the middle. I think, I think the difference here is just the weight. You can tell Torres is just a stronger kid. I cannot believe that Torres sitting down here at ringside looking at him that he makes 139 pounds. What? No, one. I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean one, 156. Even at 156, he looks like a middleweight. Yes, he, 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 his body definitely look, looks very well developed. See, what, that's what I don't like from Harvey. He just he tries to counter him too much. He gets there, gets a nice tight guard, lets him work. And you can definitely tell he's tired. Oh, yeah. He slowed down a lot. You talk about body language. His, his mouth is wide open. His, his punch, he has none of his oh. punches and got caught with a big right hand. He's standing flat-footed. Those legs are gone. Now, I just heard his father in the corner say, finish strong. But I, I just think he's too tired. The other kid is just too strong for him. Oh, but he answered right back. Jaden Harvey has a lot of a lot of heart because right now he's needing it. Oh, that was a good left left hook to the body by Torres. But uh, Harvey keeps answering back. He definitely has heart. But there's nothing in his punches. Beautiful left hook by Torres. Daniel Torres keeping the pressure on Jaden Harvey. There's the bell. I actually have it a clean sweep for Torres. Yeah, I don't see I'm, any way that Jaden Harvey could have won this fight. He gave it all he had, I think, in the, in the first two rounds. And that last round, he had to really dig down and test himself. But I think he fell short, and I think it was really in the, I think the stamina department really yes. hurt him. So right before the fight started, his father told me they moved up um, to, for this fight. I think if I was his father, I'd just move him back down to the 147 pound division. He, he, he doesn't have that, that, that strength for the 156 pounds. So you and I, we both have Daniel Torres winning this fight. Of course, we don't count, but, and I wonder at home how you have it scored. This is one terrific bout. Uh, 156 Junior Olympic Championship. You know, I definitely want to see more from uh, Torres. You know, he's exciting, he's strong, he's a strong kid. Matt Compatello got those scorecards, checking them out. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this contest, by way of unanimous decision, boxing.
out of the blue corner, Daniel Torres. Our junior Olympic champion at 156 pounds is Daniel Torres from Strong Island Boxing with a very impressive power. Yes. Pack performance. I love, I love his straight right hand. Straight right hand. If I was Harvey, I'd just go right back in the gym, come back down to 147 pounds, and keep working hard because he, he has talent. Before we continue, ladies and gentlemen, a quick acknowledgement to our commentary team here at ringside this evening. First, trainer and coach to amateur and professional boxers, ladies and gentlemen, Jose Guzman. His broadcast partner this evening, former New York State Athletic Commissioner and now serious radio host, ladies and gentlemen, Randy the Commissioner. Our next contest, ladies and gentlemen, is a 147-pound elite division title contender bout. Our first individual making his way to the blue corner, here is Melquan Cisco. We got our first championship fight of the night. <laughs> this should be exciting. Here we go. Now, the, the six borough championships, this is something started by Christian Vasquez. He had been thinking about what to do. We've all been involved in boxing. And with the death of the Golden Gloves around 2017, Christian said, what can I do? So he created the Six Borough Championships. We're talking about Staten Island, New York City, Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens. Where's number six? He turned Long Island Long into Island. a borough. That's OK. That's OK. <laughs> Join the rest of them. Hey, Long Island's got a population of over 7 million. Uh, well, bring him on. So he has taken some of the finest athletes, boxers in each Ladies one of those boroughs and matched them up for the championship. This time, and this is, is the Malachi one place. Once you win a championship, you can't hold on to it. Within four or five months, you got to defend it. And many of these champions won their title back in January. And here we are defending it for the first time. And this next one's going to be 147 pound elite. This is a, an SBC, a Six Pro Championships title eliminator, meaning there's no title here. The winner will get to fight for the title their next time out. The fighters are ready. Matt Compatello, magnificent. Matt. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest takes place with 147 pound elite division. It is brought to you by our sponsor, Cloud9. Go to the Cloud9 booth, check out their products, CBD, and more. Cloud9. Introducing first, boxing out of the blue corner, representing Williamsburg Boxing. Ladies and gentlemen, Melquan Cisco. Mel Quan Cisco. And his opponent, boxing out of the red corner, representing El Maestro Boxing Club, ladies and gentlemen, Malachi Thomas. Malachi Thomas, boxing out of native boxing, uh, rather uh, El Maestro boxing. A lot of gyms represented here today. Malachi Thomas out of El Maestro Boxing and Mel Quan Cisco out of Williamsburg Boxing. Right now we're having a little delay. They're switching headgears because in the elite division you have to use the open face headgear. Mm -hmm. You can now wear cheek protectors. So they're just switching headgears around real quick. Which do you like better? Fighting in the amateurs, I, I always loved the open face headgear. You know, I could see a lot better. Yeah. Um, it was just better to breathe, and you could just see the punches fighting, uh, coming a little bit better. In sparring, I think the cheek protectors, that little kind yeah. of piece underneath the eye, easily, I see it all the time. Guys, head, butt, 
in the gym accidentally? Yes, and, and it's barring definitely. You definitely want to wear air those cheap protectors. You know, big, big, nice headgear. But in the fight, you you know, in the amateur, you, I've always loved the open face headgear. You know, and it also gets you ready for the pros. You know, you know. right? For those who are going to go into the pros, both guys young. Cisco. 20 years old. Malachi Thomas, he is 23. And Malachi Thomas, a little bit taller, 5'8 to 5'7. And we got a soft, two southpaws. Well, we got a southpaw who's a righty, and we have a, <laughs> na yes. a southpaw. So it should, be re it should be very interesting because uh, Malachi Thomas is a lefty turn into a uh, righty. So that means that jab is going to be very strong. Yeah, so it, for those who are watching this and say, wait a minute, what do you, what do you mean a right hand to turn south? What, what are we talking about here? So, for example, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a natural righty, uh -huh. but, but I fight lefty. So that means my jab hand is Good my jab. right hand. Is my right hand. So that's my strong hand. You know, so that's what we're going to see with uh, Manika Thomas right now. And it's funny, my partner on Sirius XM, Jerry Cooney, is a left-hander, but he never boxes a southpaw. He boxes a right-hander, so his left jab would tear you up. That's, that's what we're probably going to see from Malachi Thomas. You know, he's a natural righty, and he's fighting lefty. But that was a good one, too, right down the middle. You know, it, it, it's strange when you see, see two lefties fighting against each other. You don't see that too often. Malachi Thomas told me that he, I asked him, do you have any hobbies? He said, yeah, boxing. He said, I eat it, drink it, sleep it. I'm in the gym all the time. He said, right after I finish up 2023, I am turning pro. Man, that, that, that's a beautiful thing, you know, being young, being dedicated. You know, if you, whatever you put into this boxing game is what you're going to get out. So that's a beautiful thing. How we looking tonight, boys? I love you Good great action. fights. First two fights were amazing. We yeah, know we got third fight. Danny. Love him. Straight right hand. Very strong. Love him. I, I actually saw who he was fighting. I was like, oh, Harvey. Harvey, I remember him from that. He's very slick. So it's going to be a good fight. But Torres is just too strong. You know, he kept the pressure, and he dominated the fight all three rounds. My partner, Jose Guzman, talking to promoter Christian Vasquez. Asking Christian, is that, how do you see that last fight? Because Daniel Torres was his fighter. Yeah. He works out of his gym, so people are going, "What's he talking about?" <laughs> That's what you're talking about. <laughs> right now, we got two lefties fighting against each other. How often have you, do you see lefties fighting against each other? Not too often, but it's basically the same thing. It's two righties. It's when you get a lefty against a righty that you almost have to worry about a lot of headbutts and guys stepping on each other's feet yes. all the time. You know, it's funny because uh, I was a lefty, you know, and it was weird when I would fight another lefty because I'm so used to fighting a right-hand fighter. When you fight another lefty, it's like, oh, I got to do everything backwards now. Right. Ooh, beautiful left hand from Malachi. Set. Malachi Thomas just sent his, his opponent's mouthpiece across the ring with a great left hand. What do you think about that, Kamesh? These guys, you know, they don't bite down on their mouth guards. They Some don't. guys, unfortunately, don't have the best mouthpieces in the world. If you're going to be in a sport like boxing, you, the mouthpiece, to me, and there it goes I again. Go again. He's, he, he's I think opened up yeah. his mouth. I got to tell you something. I think the mouthpiece is much more important, let's say, than the cup. And the cup is important, don't get me wrong. A hundred, but the mouthpiece, you not want to hurt your jaw. You don't want to not get your teeth knocked out. And very rarely do you see a mouthpiece get knocked out twice. Now, that's beautiful work from Manika Thomas. He's just letting his hands go in combination. You know, now I'm thinking is, is this uh, Mel Francisco just dropping his mouth guard because he's frustrated? First time I ever saw the referee 
Give it the crowd a come on. Yeah, he actually almost <laughs> fell. The, 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 the rope saved him. I'm, I, I, I do have to give the, the round to uh, Malachi Thomas. He did the, uh, the better work. That was a beautiful round for, from uh, Malachi Thomas. I would tell him just, you know, keep laying your hands in combination. It keeps working, working for him. Now, I'm looking at the blue corner right now, and, and Cisco looks a little frustrated. He doesn't look like he wants to be in there. Round number two, scheduled for three. This one between Malachi Thomas out of El Maestro Boxing and Mel Quant Cisco Williamsburg Boxing. You, you know, Kamish, I always tell my fighters, you know, um, to keep a poker face on in, in, in fights. Don't show no emotion. And from, from um, Cisco, you, you're seeing his face. He's just giving you a face like he's defeated already. The crowd actually still buzzing from that first fight of the night. Two minute rounds at 139 pound elite, which was won by Samuel Ayadichiko over Steve Mojica. What an opening fight that one was. Oh, beautiful. And here goes the mouthpiece again. Whoops. Again, look, look. He's really, he's, every time he throws a punch, he opens his mouth. Every time he punches, he opens his mouth. I really don't think Cisco wants to be in there. He looks frustrated, and he he looks his face just looks defeated already. And he has a, he actually has a little cookie on his eye right now over his left eye. And you know when he threw that shot, I believe it was a right uppercut. Normally, you bite down when you're throwing a punch. You don't open your mouth when yeah. you throw. You bite down. You know, one, one thing that I see uh, Monica Thomas has is a great right hook. And that goes again. He's a, he's a righty turning to a lefty. So he has his right hand in the front. And, and so that's his jab hand. So every time he throws that right hook, is a strong, is, is really a right hand. Mel Kwan Sisko has an amateur record of eight and one. Malachi Thomas has her amateur record of 15 and three. For me, body language, you know, body language tells you a lot. And right now, Cisco just, he just looks defeated. He, mouth is open. You're right, what do you think is going on at this point? It's not like he's gotten rocked with big shots, but he's not landing the punches I think that he really is trying to land. Do you think what, that's frustrating him? One thing that I've been seeing is like, you know, like like we said, America Thomas is really a righty, but he has that right hand in the front as a lefty. So every time Thomas lands that big right hook, it lands, and it's landing hard. As you can see, uh, Cisco has a little cookie on, uh, above his eye, and I think that's, that's probably what got him frust frustrated. And that was a, about a four-punch combination that just didn't go anywhere by Cisco. And he did, after he missed a right hand in close, he kind of rolled his eyes as if to say, I can't believe I didn't hit the guy with the right hand right in front of me. <laughs> so again, we go down to the third and final round with apparently, and quite unofficially, but we, I think we're pretty much on the mark with this, where one guy is considerably down and needs not just a 10-9 round, but needs a stoppage here. 
hundred percent. I think what's coming into play in this fight is uh, basically uh, um, Malachi Thomas has more elite fights than Tisco. So he definitely has the experience. And I think that's what's paying off in this fight. It's definitely the experience. There we go, that right hook again. See, every single time that right hook keeps he keeps catching. Him. Again, these guys are welterweights, 147 pound. Oh, elite. beautiful. The winner of this fight in his next fight will get to fight for the SBC Championship. I like what I, I'm seeing here from Malachi Thomas, whose favorite fighter, by the way, just might be pound for pound, best around, Bantamweight champion who has moved up undefeated Japanese fighter Naoya Inoue. The monster. The monster. You got the it. The monster. Is he amazing or what? Man, I've never seen somebody in those weight classes just hit you and you're, 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 you're done. Well, it Malachi, usually guys don't say something like, like, anyway. But he said, no, I'm a big, I'm a boxing historian, and I got to tell you, I know the fighters out there. I want to be like anyway. It's crazy because, you know, not a lot of Americans will say, I want to be, uh, I, I, I want to be like anyway. Usually you will hear, I want to be Floyd Mayweather. Right. Sugar Shane Mosley. That's, that's how you know uh, anyway is definitely a star. Yep. He has won titles at 108. Jumped over 112 to win 115, won at 118. Now he's heading up in his next fight later this summer at to 122. What do you think about that fight? Love it. Could be a fight of the year. Him and Stephen Fulton. Woo! Woo! And that's definitely a special talent. Cisco trying to put the issue on the inside because from the outside he has no clue how to land a shot. Both fighters are definitely a little bit gas. He did there. This just came back. He missed, I think, with the right hand. Landed a hard left hand. Definitely, uh, uh, Cisco is letting his hands go a little bit more. He definitely. I think this is his best round of the fight. Mel Quan Cisco against Malachi Thomas. Malachi Thomas in the red headgear on both of our unofficial scorecards has won the first two rounds of the fight. You know, when Cisco lets his hands go, he does good work. He's having a much better round. See, there we go. Oh, he heard him. Heard him. Heard him. Beautiful. Malachi is hurt. It ain't over till it's over. Wow. wow. That, if he would have done that since the first round, we would have had a totally different fight. That was definitely a, I gave that round to Cisco for sure. Now, I will tell you this, if this was the pros and that was a knockdown or even a state that would have had a standing eight count, which none of them do, that would be a two point round. In the amateurs, it's a one point round. I, if this was the pros, you have one more, one more round left. It would have been a, if there was this was the pros. Pros. They, they would have one more round. A two point. Yeah. It's counted as a knockdown, but there is no standing a count. Exactly. That was a great fight. I, I, I would have, wow. I, I would like I, to see more from Cisco. I gotta tell you, Malachi still looks a little bit woozy. Yes. No. Okay. I got it, 29, 28. For Malachi Thomas. I have it exactly the same. Do you think, do you think there is any chance this is a split decision? Listen, um, every, every judge has a different angle, so. I say never unanimous, know. but I say no. unanimous as well. Wow, here we go. But I would definitely like to see more from Cisco. If he fights like that, 
he would be a great, he would definitely hurt a lot more fighters. Magnificent Matt got those scorecards. He is ready to give us the decision. And here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the ringside judges have reached a split decision. Oh, split decision. The winner of this bout, by way of split decision, boxing out of the red corner, Malachi Thomas. Well, no question about the, the right man decision. Won. The right man won. But we were talking about it. This could possibly be a split decision. No surprise there. It was a real fine third round. I wouldn't mind seeing that fight again, though. I got to tell you, it wasn't one punch that did it. It was a solid round of work yes. by Mel Kwan Thomas. He won the round convincingly. So, yeah, I'm not surprised that he won a split decision. Very interesting bite and bout. Now, a third one coming up to our fourth bout. This one is 90 pound Junior Olympic. We champion. got the little guys coming up now. And you know they are going to provide a lot of action. I actually think this is a rematch from the last time. I'm not too sure, but I think it is. You know what? I remember sitting with you. Yes, I believe it is. It's Jacob Molina from Heavy Hitters Boxing against Nico Uresta out of Strong Island Boxing. I love the little guys. They just come in of and just, they work. They just throw punches and punches and punches. Ladies and gentlemen, our next contest here at Strong Island Fight Night Series 2 is a 90 pound JO Championship Division bout. It is brought to you by Life to Long Island. Introducing first. Making his way to the blue corner at this time, here is Nico Uresta. Nico Uresta heading into the ring. He's going to be fighting out of the blue corner from Strong Island Boxing. This is bragging rights right here. This is Long Island versus Long Island. You know, a, a lot of friends of mine from out of state say, wait, Randy, where do you live? Do you live in New York City? I said, no, I live on Strong Island. And they say, you mean Long Island? I said, no, we changed it to Strong <laughs> Island. <laughs> yes. These young guys put on quite a show last time. All energy. Ladies and gentlemen, his opponent making his way to the red corner at this time. Here is Jacob Molina. And from heavy hitters boxing, it's Jacob Molina. Referee. Yes, this is. I think this is the rematch. Oh, I can't wait for this one. These two guys, 90 pounds soaking wet. Yes, this is actually a rematch. Um, Jacob actually won the first one. So... This is number two. The in this and, as, and it was a close fight. Very interesting boxing bout that out of was. The blue corner, representing Strong Island Boxing, Perisico Udressa. You know, we actually have Christian Vasquez versus his cousin right now. So and you got the fast. Beating out of the red corner, representing heavy hitters boxing, ladies and gentlemen, Jacob. 
Jacob Molina. Now they've both got black head guard. They both have dark trunks. They both have shoes that are that basically look-alikes. But in the red gloves is Jacob Molina. In the blue gloves is Nico Uresta. You got cousin versus cousin right now. Strong Island versus heavy hitters. Rematch. And they just come out firing right away. Molina flew across the ring. This is exactly <laughs> what the last one was. Oh, just sit back and enjoy this one as two <laughs> 90 pounders tear into each other. They just coming in, just waiting at each other. They, even, even when they hold, they throw throwing punches. Remember the guy in the blue gloves, Nico Uresta, the guy in the red gloves, Jacob Molina. Nice jab, double jab with the right hand by Jacob Molina. But Uresta definitely doing the better work. He's busy, he's putting the pressure back, backing him up. He's not giving Molina any space at all. Did you see that professional move <laughs> in there by, look, they are doing stuff the pros do. <laughs> they are throwing their, their shoulders. The, ooh, to, beautiful left hook. And Uresta answers right back. Wow. I have to say, Uresta did not stop working that what whole a, round. What a round by these 90 pound novices. I'm not even gonna attempt to score this round. I'm gonna try. Uresta, I, I got the blue corner up 10-9. Nico Uresta against Jacob Molina. Molina out of heavy hitters boxing. And Nico Uresta out of Strong Island boxing. Oh, give me another first round here, will you? This is this is definitely going to be great. The first round was exciting. The second round is definitely going to be more of the same. And they run right to the center of the ring, exchanging punches. Here we go. Ooh, beautiful. Uresta all over him. All over. Ooh, you saw that right there, Kamish? Let him go. Look at that, how <laughs> Uresta trying to punch his way out of the clinch. I remember the, in, in the first fight, uh, uh, Molina did a lot more boxing. He looked a little bit cleaner, but Uresta is not letting him box today at all. He's just all over him. Look how he's trying to get out. <laughs> he is throwing a, a, a shoulder with the, the fist. Now, wait a minute. Christian Vasquez trains him, doesn't he? So that's Christian's kid, I, yes. I, Gonna have to talk to Christian about this. Resta definitely looks a whole lot better this fight. A lot more sharper, a whole, he just looks way better overall. Molina wants to stay, I think, on the outside. He wants, he's got a better jab, I think. But, and see that, when Resta comes in, he, <laughs> He doesn't want to get held. He does it. And the bell ending in the round number two in a bout that I said I'm not going to score. So that, that's up to you. I have it two rounds to, to zero, blue corner, Uresta. And it seems that he's been a little bit busier, but again, I'm not, I'm not going near the scoring on this. You know, with these little kids, you know, they're just going to go in there and just throw punches. And that's exactly what we're seeing. It's what we want some more. 
This is the fourth bout of the night. And it's a long night of amateur boxing. So far, we've had three great, amazing fights, action packed. And so far, in this fight is the same thing, toe to toe. We've got these little guys, we've got the women tonight. You're going to be working with one of them, and we'll hear about her. A, a medical assistant, no less. Yes. We've got heavyweights, novices, super heavyweights, and we got these little guys who are as entertaining as anything you'll see. But I love the little guys. They just go in there and give it their all. Third and final round. And the rest are all over him again, just like the first two rounds. But, but, you know, he's trying to fight his way out of the inside. Are those effective punches? How are the judges looking at that? Yeah, that's definitely going to be interesting. One, one thing I like about Arresta is that whenever Molina holds him, he, he, he starts jumping up and down, throwing that little uppercut. He doesn't let him hold him. The crowd is definitely going crazy for Arresta. As you can hear them, Nico, Nico, Nico. This is one of those bouts. You know what? You don't want to see nobody lose, right? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that shoulder. I, I definitely have to talk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> one thing I like about Arresta is that even in the clinch, he's working. Every single time he gets a, a chance to let his hands, he's letting them go. Last 10 seconds. See that? See that there's a shoulder in there again? <laughs> Beautiful work by these guys. And look guys. at this. Look at the love. Look at the love. I definitely got to clap it out for them. Okay, I'm putting you to work. This hurts, I know, but... I have to say, the first, okay, fight, the first fight between them was close. This fight, Oressa won every single round clearly for me. The busier guy. He wanted them more. He did the best work. Oressa. Unanimous decision. There's no way there should be a split decision. So if you happen to be scoring that one at home, how in the world do you score it? You gave it to your rest. And I think that's the way that more than likely the decision is going to go. But then again, there's no losing these, in this fight at all. These kids, they, they're going to keep getting older. They're going to keep getting the knowledge. They're going to keep getting better. And hopefully we can see a, a future star. In a very aggressive 90-pound Junior Olympic Championship bout. A very aggressive Nico Yeresta apparently has won this. Scorecards have now been marked, and up to the ring comes our ring announcer, magnificent Matt Compatello. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this bout, by way of unanimous decision, boxing out of the blue corner, Nico Uresta. No. Really no question, and look at these guys. This is like picture worthy, hugging each other afterwards, learning all about sportsmanship. They've done it before. You see guys in the pros getting paid millions of dollars that don't give you that much excitement. That was definitely an exciting fight. You know? Oh my goodness. They left it all in the rain. Nobody oh. should be ashamed at all. The doctor is now checking out. Jacob Molina, I felt so bad for him. He had a look of dejection on his face. You know what, if we can get during these few moments over here, if we can get Christian Vasquez between us.
Christian Vasquez. I'm here. I'm here. Congratulations on that win from your corner. Thank you. I got to, who's teaching your guy, you that's the, the shoulders inside? Uh, let me tell you, that kid, he lives boxing, eats, sleeps, and shits boxing. This kid comes to the gym, he does stuff I don't even teach him. He watches it, he studies it. He, I'm telling you, 5 o'clock in the morning, he's doing cold plunges with the big boys. He, <laughs> he organizes it. This kid is serious. How old is he? He's only 11, uh, 12 years old. Oh, my goodness. He's special. So I was saying, it, the first fight was much more competitive than this one. Yes. Molino actually was a good boxer in the last fight. This time, he did not let him box at all. Put the pressure. Pressure. Three, all three rounds. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. I, I, you know, I like Jacob. I like how he has my family over there. Jacob's father, I know them, very good people. Jacob's a good boxer, and uh, you know, it was a good fight, but you know, my man won, so I'm excited, I'm happy. So hopefully you do the same thing. Thank you, Jose. I'll be back too, I'll be back. <laughs> we got our first elite championship out right now. It's going to be an interesting one. Okay, our next one. 125 Elite. And this is an SBC championship fight. A six borough championship fight. And again, I'm so thrilled that Kristen Vasquez has made our own Strong Island a borough. But she admits. It should. It definitely should be. Ladies and gentlemen, David Reyes! This is our fifth bout of the evening. Within a few bouts, you gotta vacate your position here because you're working the corner, yes. right? This is actually uh, a guy that I used to work with, David Reyes, that he actually won the title in the last show. So he's actually defending it tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Fighting out of the blue corner and Enrique Leon Thompson Kid. He is a ring defending 125 pound elite division six for Rochelle, David Reyes. The very gifted David Reyes fighting unattached. Out of the red corner. This is gonna be a great fight. David won his title in the last show and um uh, Enrique Leon actually just finished winning the the Ring Masters Championship, so he's the number one guy uh, in the division. So this is going to be a, a great show. But Leon is definitely the, the taller guy. And again, we got lefty versus lefty. And his opponent, a little bit taller, has a longer reach out of cops and kids. And all those guys out of that gym are always in tip-top condition. Yeah. This is this is the fight that I've actually been wanting to see for a while. You know, Leon is definitely a tall guy for the 125 pound weight class. So Ray has definitely got his work cut out for him. Well, keep in mind 125 elite because that's what these guys are. And in just a little while, I'll be telling you about another 125 pounder I have on this show. Yes, so I'm excited. You're going to be sitting with me while I'm announcing it. I have never announced a fight where one of my fighters is in the ring. So I, I can't Do you get nervous? Do you get I nervous? Can, we'll see in a few moments. These are actually uh, potential opponents for one of your guys. Who knows? Oh, beautiful over here. Over here, right by Reyes. Reyes pinning his 
opponent, Enrique Leon, on the ropes. You know, one thing I've always liked about Reyes is that he's a very physical fighter. He's not the most gifted, but he's very physical. And he always brings the fight, and he's a strong guy. He never backs down from anybody. See what Leon is doing right now. Popping him with the jab, then moving. That's what he should be doing. Not hanging on the inside, not languishing on the ropes as he has done. Now, you know, the, the thing about these elites that they fight in three-minute rounds. Can, See, can he keep doing again. it? Yes. Can he keep doing that for three three-minute rounds? Because right now what I'm seeing from Reyes, Reyes is putting the pressure, and every time he gets on the inside, he does the better work. I would like to see Leon box a little bit more. Stay on his toes. Keep him on the outside with that jab. But then again, he lets Reyes in the inside. That's not the fight that he wants to be in. That's what David Reyes, as he's coming in, he loves that right hook to the body, and then he just stays on the inside. See, this is Reyes. This, no knockdown. This is David Reyes' fight. He wants to make it rough and tough, get it in the inside. Kamish, I'm, I'm going to have to let you judge this fight because I used to work with Reyes, so I don't want to. So. David Reyes, I thought with his pressure here, wins the first round in the fight. But I got to tell you, I'm impressed with him bringing Leon, but he's got to keep off the ropes. Make sure you guys go check out the 360 photo booth. Once again, make sure you guys go check out the 360 photo booth. Get your photo out of the 360 photo booth. Make sure you check out C4 Energy Drink. Once again, we got free C4 Energy Drinks. Get your scroll out and fight that official team with a power boss. Check out Cloud9. Crazy. Southside Jamaica. Queen Rings crazy. Cause I'm still good. How he Round number two. So how did you score that first round, uh, Kamish? I gave the first round 10-9 to David, David Reyes. But I'm wondering if now all of a sudden Enrique Leon is saying, hmm, I think I might have a blueprint here, and that blueprint could be my jab, my but longer he, jab. Here we go. He backs himself up to the ropes again. But see, I, th I think he's got the blueprint when he's in the center of the ring. That, but that, then he gives it away by going back to the ropes and allowing Reyes to score. You know, I, I, was, again. I was a taller fighter. I fought at 125 pounds, 132 pounds. And my thing was always stay in the middle of the ring. Make it hard for these little guys to touch you. Keep it at range. But Leon, he just keeps backing himself up to the ropes. We used to have a crazy long time ago, a crazy coach who would stand in a corner and he'd give another guy a little shock, like a, a little <laughs> vibrator, and it gave a shock. And if you went to the ropes, they would reach over and they'd just give you a little oh. peck on the shoulder. You didn't go near the ropes. Yeah. And they would remind you in the corner, every time you go to the ropes, think about getting a shot. Don't get near the ropes. Right now I see, even though they're in the inside, I see Leon doing the better work. And he looks like he has a lot more energy in the tank. I see Reyes slowing down a little bit too much. I see Reyes definitely slowing down. Yes, he did. But... This is where Leon needs to take advantage of it. Stay in the middle of the ring. At you know who Enrique Leon reminds me of a little bit? The 154-pounder who got knocked out not long ago, <laughs> Sebastian Fondura. The Fondura. You, you know, you'll be surprised. I, I have a 118-pounder, 6'1". 
call Dom out. Dom call Dominique Crowder. He's uh, 14 and 0 as a pro. What does he have? Spaghetti legs? Uh, you know who he looks like, and who's also my assistant. Uh, uh, he's also my assistant, in, in with him is um, Mark Brennan. He's my he's, okay. he's my assistant. Mark Breland, one of the greatest amateurs of all time, about four Golden Glove championships in a row, gold medal, world title, one of the great amateurs this country has ever seen. He was actually 110 and one. Uh, how many knockouts? <laughs> about 90, something like that. Definitely, I, I definitely have Red Leon winning this round. Okay, here we go. That was the end of round number two. Now let's see what happens. You know, just by looking at, at the corners and looking at uh, bo body language, Leon looks like the more, the more comfortable fighter in there. He looks relaxed. If you look at uh, if you look, if you look at Reyes, he take it, he's breathing very hard, hands in the boat, breathing hard. While if you look at Leon, he's very relaxed. So I think this third round is very, very important. I know that you gotta be a dog for her. This ain't what she meant, but she told you to open up more. Yeah. You're watching Strong Island Boxing. Yeah. Coming to you from Stereo Garden. Beautiful arena, Patchogue, Long Island. Like they were saying the pros, championship round. Yep, and that's it, number three. And I've got this thing even at one apiece. I think this will end up being a split decision somehow. Well, let's see how this round goes. Leon, the southpaw, black trunks, tall. Oh, beautiful left hand from Leon. And David Reyes fighting unattached. Reyes needs to start moving his head. Throw it, David. Go through, throw two, three jabs. Work his way in the inside and work in the inside. He needs to work that body. He keeps getting caught at the end of the punches of Leon. This is our fifth bout of the evening for the Six Borough Championship Strong Island Boxing, put on by Christian Vasquez. And basically, everybody in New York has been talking about this amateur tournament, which has more or less replaced our dearly departed Golden Gloves. Now, everybody wants to own a piece of that hardware tonight. Now, the belts are beautiful. This, this arena, this show is beautiful. So... It's definitely living up to the hype. You know, it's funny. This place holds about eight, nine hundred people. It sounds like eighty thousand. You know what this reminds me of? What's that? Uh, fighting in a Hammerstein ballroom. The, the Hammerstein, Hammerstein, yeah. yeah. Hammerstein ballroom in New York City, the old uh, vaudeville theater kind of place. Yes, with overhangs and whatnot. David Reyes in the blue trunks trying to keep that pressure on, but he's this eating some shots to the yes. body. This is the, the, the fight is ending. Somebody has to take over this round. And right now I see Leon definitely doing the better work. Enrique Leon is flurrying back. Bad place for him to be. But he's make, somehow he's making it work. He just looks like the, the guy that's he is. with the more energy, with the most energy. And here's where he's at his best, right here. This Middle of the ring. I would like to see him right there. Just pop his jab, take no step back, use the feints. That's what he needs to do right there. Right, right. And then and Reyes comes in, ties him up, can't get his hands loose. Leon needs to, every time Reyes backs him up, he needs to circle his way out the ropes. He can't Final second. Okay, there's the bell. And you said when this round first started, you think it could very possibly be a split decision. I said, let's see how this round goes. Well, I did give it to Enrique Leon, 
And if he does win it, see, I had him losing the first round. I've got Leon coming on strong the last two rounds. And I thought that this round was anybody's round. I thought Leon took it. And I think he is going to win the fight. Let's see if it is split. You ever see a draw? One of you know, back in the day, I was at a, do, do you remember the PAO smokers back in the yeah, day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see in a draw. And, oh, we got the decision coming up. Here we go. We got our first elite champion of the night. Six borough champion. They're actually still, I believe they're still going over those cards. Man. It's definitely a split decision. Yeah, the longer they take on a card means they're totaling everything up. And they say, okay, let's do it one more time. I say split decision. You say split decision. It was let's see. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this battle by way of unanimous Wow, decision. okay. And new one. Okay, we were wrong on the split decision, but we got the right winner. Enrique Leon got the one. He is the new SBC champion. Definitely control the pace a little bit more, and he just had more. He just had more left in the tank, which means within the next four or five months, no more than six months, he's got to defend that championship again. And that's one of the things so great. David Leon, David Reyes rather, came over to us, gave us a fist pump. His heart broke, he lost the title, won it on a real good effort back in January, lost it tonight on another good effort by his opponent, Enrique Leon. Oh yeah, our next bout. A pair of little guys. For the 85 pound Junior Olympic Championship. It's gonna be Chase Miller, who is fighting unattached against Joey Favarito at a strong island box. So, coming up to our bout of the evening, we got 18 bouts here. And we've had some very entertaining, very entertaining moments.
And I believe this is the rematch from the last uh, card. This was also a very close fight last time they fought. And our ring announcer, magnificent Matt Compatello, ready to give us the introduction. and gentlemen, the following contest is brought to you by Candelario's Knockout Painting and Power Wash. It takes place in the 85 pound. J.O. Division is a championship contest. Introducing the competitors first. Boxing out of the red corner, ladies and gentlemen, here is Chase Miller. Do you remember Chase Miller from last time? He's yes, a so great I do. boxer. I, I, just I don't remember who won because to me they both did. Uh, Favorito actually Favorito. won the fight. We actually thought uh, Chase Miller won the fight, but they gave it to Favorito. Chase Miller is an amazing boxer. He looks like he has so much experience. I'm really looking forward to this fight. This is the, the redemption. But we just saw a very interesting one before with 290 pounders, Jacob Molina and Nico Uresta. As I remember, this was the same way. I remember Favorito definitely brings the fight, and, and Miller is definitely a great fighter. He likes to box a lot. He has a lot of good movement, and he's a combination. He's very slick. That's what I remember from the last time. Chase Miller in the red head guard. Joey Favorito in the blue head guard. Look, look, see that? You see that? It looks like a veteran in there. <laughs> Do you know how big this ring is? It looks like a very, like, 18 or maybe even I think feet. I think this is probably like a 20. It is. And to these little guys, this is a like huge. A, it's like a marathon. <laughs> now, the thing is with the little guys, when it comes to judging these fights, you know, the judges are trying to look for the guy that's busier. Right now, Favorito is actually the busier guy. Yes. Uh, uh. Miller definitely is a sharper guy, but Favorito is definitely the busier one. Final seconds, round number one. Oh, beautiful, beautiful right hand by Miller. Oh, Miller just punched his chest. Actually, I thought I heard the the uh, the sound of <laughs> that. Have you ever seen that where guys actually thought the bell rang and I just actually thought the bell was about to ring? That actually happened to me one time in the Nationals. You know, you have three rings at the same time. I heard the other bell and I thought it was my bell. <laughs> I just, I, I love, I love the, the pure boxing from Miller. Love that jab for this little guy. I love the way he keeps his distance. Favorito is definitely doing a lot of good work too. You know. You know, very close round, very close round. I, I'll give it to Chance Miller, even though Favorito started off stronger. You know, it's very hard to score these little guys. I, I do not like scoring little guys. It's very hard to score these fights because you don't know what the judges are looking for. Well, in this case, I think it was the cleaner boxing, almost the classic boxing of Chase Miller. Throwing that jab, quick jab, accurate jab, right hand behind it, combinations, and then the movement, the foot movement. I was very impressed with that first round from Chase Miller.
This is bout number six of the evening. Here we go. <laughs> wow. Now what? You, you, saw, you heard the bell ring. And Joey Favorito flew across the ring. All of a sudden, the referee stepped between them and wait, hold it, and turned his back on the fighter. Oh, Favorito definitely put it. He, one thing I like about Favorito is that he always starts the round off strong. He always brings the fight. But what I like about Miller is he boxes in circles. He's moving. See, he does not stay there. Watch him get out. Watch right there. He knows how to use the ring. During that momentary break, Chase Miller stepped back and took a look towards his corner. And they gave him a, you're doing great. They gave him nice and easy. <laughs> just, I, I just Ali? love him. I love his work. Chase Miller with the red head guard. And Joey Favorito out of Strong Island Boxing. Chase Miller fighting unattached. What, what, when was the last time we seen two little kids fighting? These are like, how, how much do they weigh? 85 pounds. Throwing jab upstairs, jab downstairs. Like it's, Well, I'd like to say that we did see it in the Jacob Molina, Nico Uresa fight, but we saw brawling there, a very action-packed brawl. This is more classic boxing. But they're both stepping towards each other. You don't have either guy running around the ring. They are standing in the pocket, willing to oh, trade with each other. beautiful guys. word by Miller. I just like, he's just very sharp. I love him. See, he hits, moves around, moves, around, moves in circles. Beautiful work. How did you score that round, Commissioner? I gave it to uh, Chase Miller one more time, so I've got him up now, 20 to 18. Do you remember the first time we scored this fight? We scored it for Miller, and they gave it to Favorito. So let's see how they score this one. Yeah. You know. It's amazing your total your recall on some of these fights. I'm, I'm thinking. I'm wait a minute. I just remember being really <laughs> incredibly entertained. <laughs> Round number three. You know these are definitely very talented kids. You know, favorito. I, I love his aggressiveness. I love Ch uh, um, Chase Miller's box and footwork. Ooh. I just like how Chase Miller, he controls the middle of the ring. He knows where he's at at all times. See, he punches and he moves. He always steps around every single time. That's experience right there. You don't see a lot of little kids doing it at this level like that. It's funny, these little guys I didn't get to speak to, and I'd love to sit down and do a yeah, one -on -one I would love interview that. with these kids. Like you might say to a, a grown-up, who's your favorite fighter? And you hear Sugar Ray Robinson, <laughs> Joe Lewis, Muhammad Ali. The, these kids nowadays would probably say Jake Paul. <laughs> it's crazy, right? Ooh, beautiful left hook by Chase Miller. That was a counter left hook. And Chase Miller drives Favorito to the rope. So Favorito, Chase no, is doing one thing that I've noticed very well. Every time Chase Miller throws that over him, right, he misses it, he always follows it up with a left hook. And that's a sign of almost a, a veteran. That time he couldn't. He fell a little bit off balance with that hard but watch overhand him, right. Watch him turn around. Look, he knows his way around the ring. That's one thing I know. He always knows where he's at in the ring. As soon as he sees those ropes, he gets out the ropes. And 
See, there we go. Always throws that hook. Beautiful Here's work. Here's the belt. Beautiful work. Very close round. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it to Miller one more time, and I think this is, you know, had I given that one to Favorito, I'd have Favorito just behind by one point. Let's see how the judges score this one. And I ask all of you, if you are scoring at home, do you have a 30-27 for Miller? Do you have Miller winning at all? Do you have a 29-28 for Miller? Who do you have winning uh, this fight? I, I definitely got a uh, chance Miller winning this fight. But again, we had the same scores last time. And it turned out to be in favor of Favorito. I see Chance Miller winning, so let's just see what the judges see. You think it's safe to say that Miller wins a decision here, or does Favorito get it? Um, I mean, I always go with my gut. I'm gonna say Chance Miller. Miller unattached. Favorito at a Strong Island Boxing. Both did a terrific job yet again. Do it a third. And the scorecards being. That's the second one, right? Do it a third time. Scorecards being checked and double checked and triple checked here before they are made official so is Favorito going to be 2-1-0 against Miller or is it going to be 1-1 one and one, one apiece I guess we'll find out you know I always get scared when they take long with the scorecards this one for the 85 pound junior Olympic championship Magnificent Matt Compatello has the scores, and here they Ladies are. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this contest, an 85 pound JO division champion by way of split decision, boxing out of the red corner, Jay Siller. No surprise there. And a split decision on top of everything else. Two young warriors. Jose Guzman is going to try to get one or both of them over here. Because you know what? These guys deserve to get on television. We'd love to hear from them. Two very gifted young men being checked out both by the doctor right now.
the champion of energy drinks, and it's for the 119-pound Elite Women's Division Six Borough Championship. Our first competitor in this championship contest makes her way to the blue corner at this time. There is Barbella Salvato. This 118 pound elite women's SBC title. So, a little bit later on tonight, Jose Guzman is going to be working with a couple of fighters. He just got off headset for a few moments because he's got to just go check on his fighter. I'm leaving me with you guys to call all, some, part of this female bout. 119 pound, a women's elite. And this is for a championship. One of the 10 SBC championship being fought tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, and I will tell you that my fighter is in the fight the coming up after this. Women's Division Six Borough Championship. Introducing first, boxing out of the blue corner, representing John Shim. Ladies and gentlemen, Marbella Salvado. And her opponent, competing out of the red corner, Representing Brotherhood Boxing Club, here is Tiara Almonte! Tiara Almonte with the red trunks. Marbella Salvado in the dark trunks. Three rounds. Women's SBC title and here we go referee Andy Adele Sam Ida Chico returned Metro's headgear bout is underway opening moments round number one Almonte the southpaw and I always am curious in the opening moments of an amateur bout sometimes some of the boxers come out as a southpaw then they switch they just try to throw the opponent off but Almonte does box as a southpaw. And her opponent out of John's gym, Marbella Salvado, fighting out of the blue corner. She's got the dark trunks on. Right-hander pushing her way in, trying to cut the ring off. As Almonte is moving back and forth, left and right, pushes off there. Really not allowed to shove. And if this was a true Olympic bout, referees do not allow boxers to push their opponent away. And you can see who wants to make the bout out of this, the brawl out of this, Marbella Salvado. 
in those dark trunks, pouring the pressure on. And Kiara Almonte at a Brotherhood Boxing, moving. Almonte keeping it on the outside. Southpaw going to stick with that right jab. Ducks under a right hand, falls into a clinch. Referee Eddie Adele with a quick warning there to Almonte, who got pushed out. She said, watch, he said, watch your head. Salvato works the body, takes a few upstairs shots. Salvato comes back in, trying to make a brawl out of it. Goes to the body. They are going at it. And now Almonte takes a step back. Very interesting. Round number one, a flurry by Almonte at the bell. Close round. This is the seventh bout of the night between Marbella Salvado and Chiara Almonte. I'm gonna narrowly, I don't score even rounds ever. And sometimes I think it's a cop out. People, nah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with an even round here. I just don't believe in that. I, I want to find a winner of the round, both pro and amateur. And especially the amateurs always frown on even rounds. And I feel the same way. You've got to be able to find me a winner. And I saw Kiara Almonte in the red trunk, southpaw. I saw her winning that round. 10-9. This one is for a championship. 119 pound elite championship. Women's SPC championship. How's your fighter? You're back here. How's your fighter? You checked on her right now. Yeah, I just made sure she was comfortable. You know, she was uh -huh. warming up, stretching this out. Is you know, Re Rebecca, right? Rebecca Goldberg, yes. You know, this is actually a rematch from the Ringmaster uh, tournament. Kiara Monte is actually a, uh, she's a, a softball player, um, and she's act very, actually very athletic. She actually has sparred with Rebecca a few times. She's, uh, I like her. She's very athletic. She's a pure boxer, and she, she, well, if she gets more experience, she's going to be a uh, uh, force to be reckoned with for sure. Well, she did a nice job. Nice enough, I thought, to win in the first round, but I got to tell you, Marbella Salvado in those dark trunks put the pressure on, ripped some hard body shots. Yeah. She kept it close. I thought Salvado lost around 10 9, but made it very, very interesting. You know, Salvado is, you know, um, you know, a Mexican fighter from the Bronx. You know, she, you, so you know she's going to bring it. You know she's going to bring it. She, you know she's going to rip the body, you know, and, and that's actually what she's doing right now. She gets it, she works in the inside, and she rips those hard body shots, as you can see. But I just like uh, Kiara, uh, Kiara Amante's uh, footwork. I like the way she, she, she moves around, uses a jab. I just wish she, she keeps the distance a little bit better. Salvador definitely keep, keeping the pressure, keep it, keeping the fight at uh, close range. And, and that's what she needs to do. And Kiara needs to do the opposite. You know, keep the distance, box and move around. Another close round. And I think both rounds could have gone either way. And I think some of the cleaner shots weren't landed by Almonte. But I got to tell you, this one is about as close as any fight we've seen tonight. You know, the girls are definitely bringing it tonight. You know, it was back in 1992 that I was announcing for NBC the Olympics in Barcelona, and I kept calling every bout a fight. And one of the officials came up to me and said, please don't call these fights. What you do in the pros, they're fights. These are bouts. And I've done it a few times tonight. I've called them fights. Stop getting so picky. They're <laughs> fights, they're bouts, they're contests between... 
some of the most loveliest athletes, most well-conditioned athletes in the world, and that's why we're in this sport. You know, something I, I, I like uh, from the past few years is how women's boxing is growing, you know, is, is getting bigger and bigger. You got Amanda Serrano, Clarissa Shields. You know, you, you also had our, our vice president, you know, Sonia Lamanakis. You know, these are females that don't all just, became cha world you know champions. What? Don't just say Amanda Serrano. Don't just say Clarissa Shields. There's so many, so many. more out there. Yes. You, you know what? Sinisa Estrada, to oh. me, has worked her way right up. If, if you told me she was number one pound for pound, 24-0, uh, uh, yeah, she, she is unbelievable. You know, a lot of these girls, you know, I feel like the girls... Now, nowadays, they, they, they definitely sometimes show out more than the men. You know, you saw that Katie Taylor versus the Man of Serrano fight in the garden. Yeah. It was toe-to-toe. Oh, to toe. That was a dream. Toe-to-toe. To toe. Like yep. I think one of the, maybe the best female fight I have ever seen. For sure. You know, and then we got these two young ladies right here, you know, uh, fighting their hearts out, you know. Silvano has landed a few hard shots. This is another tough round. They are trading on the inside. Who do you give this to? Right now, I, you know, I, I, I see Almonte doing the better work. Every time they get an inside, every time they get an inside, she moves her hands. You know, I, I, I just think Salvato just is leaning in a little bit too much. Uh, punches are a little bit too wide, and as you can see right there, getting caught. You know, as she, as she get, she's getting a stand. Took a hard right shot. Now. You know. I just wish Salvador just kept her punches a little bit more shorter and not so wide. As the, you know, beautiful fight. You no, know, it makes me happy seeing uh, these. You know, it makes me happy, you know, seeing these females going in there and fighting their hearts out. You know, back in 1995, when I was commissioner in New York, there had been no female boxing in New York. And I said to the former commissioner, Jose Torres, the former heavyweight champion, light heavyweight champion, that I was gonna license females in New York. He said, don't be crazy. People are going to laugh at you if you do that. And I said, Jose, let them laugh. If the females want to box, let them box. And then when I said, I even dream of the day that's going to be a main event at Madison Square Garden, he said, don't say it too loud. You'll be laughed right out of the business. Nobody laughed at me. Wow. And, and look at that. Here we go. How do you have it scored? I've got it 30 to 27 in a very tough bout. I gave it to Kiara Almonte. Our ring announcer, ready to give us Ladies the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this bout, and new 119 pound elite women's six borough champion by way of unanimous decision, boxing. Out of the red corner, Kiara Almonte. Well, no question there. All three rounds, though, were competitive. She had to earn that championship. And now, the bout that I was telling you about, and this one is between, this one is going to be 125 Elite International. So we got your guy coming up now. Championship. The local guy is from Brotherhood Boxing. His name is Frankie Garcia. A tough guy. You've seen him fight. I have. Frankie's the guy that's definitely going to come forward. He's going to bring the fight. Well, you Ladies and 
gentlemen, the following contest takes place in the 125 pound elite division and it is for the Sixth Fargo Championship International Title. It is brought to you by Seymour Energy, the champion of energy drinks, and Studio 15 Productions. Our first competitor, making his way to the blue corner at this time, here is Alex Mapuka. Here we go. This is the one I've been telling you about. Alex Bukuka against Frankie Garcia. Frankie looks certainly a lot bigger than 126 pounds. Alex Bukuka grew up in Zambia, moved at 13 years old to New Zealand. He's only been boxing five years. He's pursuing, he wants to represent New Zealand in the Olympics next year. We call him the maker of the very good defender fight. You'll see. I think. I may have to. I can't sit down at the table. I'm just going to have to stand up. So, Jose. Ricky Garcia. Frankie Garcia versus Makuka. I am definitely looking forward to this fight. Garcia, definitely a very strong fighter. He brings the pressure. And like Randy said, Makuka is a great boxer, so I'm, I'm interested on how he's going to handle that. Plus, the hometown advantage is for, for Frankie Garcia. First round. Makuka uses the legs a lot. He slips a lot of shots. Very tough guy to hit with a clean shot. And he's got a, he doesn't have brutal power, but he's got very fast hands. You can definitely see that. You can definitely see the, the that he has long arms already. Very good boxing, very good movement. We're gonna see how Frankie Garcia could handle that. Once he gets that jab on track, nice right Beautiful uppercut. Beautiful uppercut. But he doesn't have that brutal power. We're working on the power with him. You know, one thing I can tell already about Makuka is that he's definitely has that international experience. In and out, you, like you were saying, he's playing tag right now. I'm gonna touch you, you're not gonna touch me. And, and that's what makes the difference in these, in these kind of fights. Beautiful movement. And I think he's, he's definitely he ever get to the, the pros. He has unending stamina. I if think Garcia, Garcia needs to work his way in, get in the inside. But right now, Makuka is making it very hard for him to, to even get in the inside. He, he pops the jab moves. He's, he's not standing still. Ooh. 
and he switches up, as you as see right there. Definitely a very awkward fighter, I can say. Lefty, righty. The thing is, when he switches up, he is a right-hander. He can box as well southpaw as he can right-handed. But his jab is his big thing. Not the cross, the jab. I, I, and how many fights does he have? He's had you, about can tell, you can tell he has a lot of experience the way not, he's moving it's in there. Surprisingly, not a lot. It's around 20 fights. Wow. He's around 18 and 2. He, I definitely love his movement. He controls the range. Control. See, right there. Controls the range. He's not letting Frankie come in the inside at all. I will tell you that I was a little bit worried because he got in on Tuesday. Remember, he came in from New Zealand. It takes days to get over the jet lag, and I was actually worried. I wanted him to come in days earlier. You know, right now, he has Frankie Garcia uh, 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 punch shot. Like, like, he's controlling the pace. Like, see right there? It's like almost like Garcia doesn't even want to throw because he, he doesn't know if he's going to touch him or not. That's Beautiful work by Makuka. His movement is amazing. Like you said, the Matrix. Told him that he's got to throw. He can't stand there. Just, I love some of those moves, but don't just give me moves. Punch. Here we go. Punch. I have to say, I mean, that was beautiful work by Makuka. He, he controlled the pace of the round. He controlled the distance. That's definitely a turn round for Makuka. I'm, I am actually doing my very best. I am doing doing my very best to keep my self-control. Listen, I can tell you this right now. You can definitely see the pedigree in Makuga for sure. Seldon. Cletus Seldon is joining us here, the Hebrew Hammer. Oh man, this feels good. This, these shows here are unbelievable. These amateur shows are better than anything I've ever dreamed of. I said it before to a bunch of people. If I was a kid and came out here, and I lived my dream basically where I wanted to come out and have everything like this, I would have to dream bigger because this, this is great. unreal. Okay, the guy in the blue, Alex Makuka from New Zealand, is my fighter. Okay, wow, of course he is. We brought him over from New Zealand, and Frankie Garcia, his opponent, is tough. I we can see that. Putting him in tough. Yeah, and I can tell uh, by the way his gear was, he has that havoc, havoc, uh, yes. that, he has <laughs> that havoc on, you knew right away you he know, could fight. Frankie Garcia, actually, he just finished losing in the finals of the Ringmasters, which were formerly known as the Golden Gloves. So, and... He's been around for a long time. He has a lot of fights, but Makuka is just too agile for him. Yeah, they have that great amateur style where they know how to throw more than one punch and just slip, move, get out, through it again, over and over again, nonstop. Makuka is almost having fun in there. Like, he's playing tag. Yeah. I he, touch you, you don't touch me. Absolutely. Scores his points and gets out every single time. Doesn't When you see shows like this, doesn't it make you like think like, damn, I wish I had these kind of shows when I was coming up? Uh, I, close, like I said, the closest you get to this is when you fought in the garden. Oh, yeah, this nice is the garden the Barclays Center. It's unreal. I, I would have to dream bigger, I said. I, I, I wouldn't know what to do. I always wanted to be like a WWF guy coming out, just like the WWF, like I'm Hulk Hogan, like I've done now at the Barclays Center. But to do it on a regular show on a Tuesday or a Saturday is just uh, phenomenal. A fantastic idea and, and, and show that I've never seen before. 18 fights, it's unreal. 18 nice fights, body plus fam. you get an entrance. Entrance and competitive, better than pro shows we've been to. Exactly. Oh, beautiful right hand by, by Garcia. Garcia doing a little bit better work. Makuga needs to keep keep using his footwork. Keep in and out, in and out, moving around. Alex keeping his distance. He likes to use the ring. Sometimes I get on him about throwing a, a right uppercut from too far out. Yeah, that's it. That, that's their style, right? That's a love looking very flashy. And he takes a great shot, too, we can see. Now, Cletus, you being a puncher, you're fighting a guy like Makuka. 
moves around a lot. What would you do? Well, if he moved that much, I would have to have him come to me because I'm never going to be able to catch him unless I can wear him out and tire him. But you really have him come to you and play that, uh, the man who do it the opposite way than somebody. I learned that when I took my loss in Canada a few years ago. I should have had the guy come after me instead of chasing him all around. Nice overhand right by Alex Mukuka. He's taking chances right. now. But that's what Red would want to do. You want that guy to take a chance so you can counter him over the top or something. I've warned him about dropping his hand, but he says, I feel I know my range. The guy's not going to hit me. Oh, Ready beautiful left hook by Garcia. End of the round. So that, I definitely give that round to Makuga, but Garcia is getting closer and closer. So th this third round is definitely going to be interesting. Yeah, he knows how to score so many points. He's just in and out nonstop. And it, it, it's like he's dancing in there. He's not taking up any, any energy doing it. So, Cletus, when, when are we going to see you again? Oh, man, this has been a uh, journey for me. Uh, recently became a free agent. Yes, I've heard. Oh, it was a lot of work, a lot of effort went into it. And now, being a free agent, I'm able to fight on any boxing cards. Uh, the only problem I have going into it is they have these shows in New York. The venues aren't big enough, the ones that they're putting on right now. We need a bigger venue. They're putting the Tiafimo Lopez. If it was at the bigger garden, I could get on there. The little four form. I got too many fans with them, it would, it would oversell. So, definitely excited to see you fighting again. I actually have a girl fighting tonight. Uh, it's funny because I always call her, she's actually Jewish. I always call her, yo, Rebecca, get the Jewish, uh, the Hebrew hammer. Yeah. And here you are. <laughs> yeah. And she's also from Long Island. Oh, yep, yep, yep. And if she's the hammer, that means she has to come forwards and she knows that I work hard to, to, to put on a performance and to get that victory. Final round right here. Championship round. Luka took a hard right hand to the face, came back with a few shots of his own. The faster hands, I think, of Makuka. Beautiful combination. angles. Combinations that you can see the aggressiveness uh, in the third round's amazing. What I like about Makuka, she, he, he, he hits you, takes that little angle to the side, and next thing you know, he's not there. So I don't like when he lays his hand out there like that. Right, right. One thing I've seen he's, that he has changed is that this this round, he's bringing the fight to Garcia. Absolutely. You can see, and he's not tired at all, and he's just throwing and winging those punches. He wanted to put some body into that. He can hurt somebody really bad. The one thing I would like to see Garcia do against a, a mover like this, you have to attack the body. Oh, absolutely. You have to hit the body. You got to slow him down. That should have been the, the plan the whole time. Cletus, got to ask you something. He's 27 years old. He asked me today, can I get more power? Oh, absolutely. You just got to believe in yourself and it'll actually come. You got to put your whole body into those shots. Little training with weights or something like that, but you got to really believe that every shot oh, you're going to throw is going to hurt you. He reminds me of Wendy a little bit, huh? Wendy Toussaint, yes. Wendy's a little bit more defensive. It's hard to hit him, but he reminds me of Wendy. Nice body shot. Another one. That's way. See, that's what Garcia needs to be doing. I couldn't help that. <laughs> <laughs> it's only once. <laughs> Things are definitely heating up right here. There's nobody's taking a step back. They're right there in the middle of the ring, exchanging. It's incredible how he knows how to just move out of the way. The punches are coming. Slides right back. Boom. Misses him by a centimeter. The, the one thing I don't like that he does is that he sometimes pull, pulls back with his hands down and his chin up in the air. Against the big puncher, that could be very dangerous. Absolutely, and in a pro game, that's what exactly would happen. Especially with those little, with those little gloves that change, they change everything. Absolutely. Ooh. There we go. Exactly what I was saying. Ooh. Backing up with the hands down. Of course, the one, the one second. Don't get hit with a hook tonight. But he's doing enough to win the round. The crowd loving it here at the final bell. They are flooring. Let's see if there's going to be a hug here. Bukuka goes over to the corner of his opponent. Now there is that, that respect, that love. Terrific. 
And if things go like we think, Alex Makuka should come out with a unanimous decision win. Got it. I have to say, Kamishi, he's definitely a talented kid. He definitely is. Okay, we know what we have to work on now. I, I would, I would like to see him um, put a little bit more pressure and stop pulling back with his hands down. That's the only thing. Besides that, he did beautiful. He controlled the pace of the fight. You know, he won every single round, and if it, if it went the way that we think it went, he should be going to, uh, he should, it should be on the way to victory right now. He is the Commonwealth champion. He knows he's getting better, and he... And he only has 20-something fights. Yeah. So let's see who wins this one. This is for the SBC international title. Have reached a split decision. The winner of this South by way of split decision, and the new 125 pound weight international six row champion boxing out of the red corner, Ricky Garcia. Not the way I saw it. Not the way I saw it. I have, I gave all three rounds, perhaps one round, to Frankie Garcia. Well, Kamish, I'll be right back. I gotta go get uh, my fighter ready. So I'm gonna leave you here for a little while. You, I'll be back. Good luck over in your corner. Thank you so much. So that one was in the eighth bout of the night with Frankie Garcia taking a split decision in the international championship featherweight over Alex Makuka. The next bout is going to be 156 novice between Brian Vera of Vamos Boxing and Liam Murphy of Strong Island Boxing.
So we move on in Strong Island Championships, the SPC Championships, the Six Borough Championships. This one, 156, novice Brian Vera of Vamos Boxing and Liam Murphy of Strong Island Boxing. There's Brian Vera, very popular figure out of almost boxing. And boxing out of the blue corner, representing Shoal Island Boxing, ladies and gentlemen, Leo Murphy! Liam Murphy out of Strong Island Boxing. Both these guys very popular, 156 novice. And I think for the first time tonight, you're going to see some real power, power, power shots being thrown. As you can see already, big right hand from Reva. No, a lot. When well, you can see the novice guys, a lot of you're going to see a lot of brawling, a lot of big shots. As you can see right there. You can definitely see Murphy is more of the polished fighter right away. Rara, you can t definitely tell that he's a strong kid. We are in bout nine. This one after this one takes us midway. And then right after this bout, you're going to be leaving me again. Yes. But after this bow, you, I have to step into the ring. Good right hand by Murphy. This is round number one. These guys are throwing some, especially right-handed bombs. Liam Murphy has tossed a couple of hard right hands. He has missed with each one. I think he's loading up a little too much with the right hand. Yeah, I actually see the same thing from Again. Brian Vera. Vera is just throwing haymakers. I would like for one of them to just settle down, start using your jab, start working to the body. Oh, beautiful right hand by, by Vera. No, up, up, up to the last couple of seconds, it was a very close round. But I have to say that a big right hand at the end definitely convinced me. So I will have to give it to Vera. Brian Vera, by the way, has got the dark head guard. And Liam Murphy, he's got the red head guard. These are 156 novice in a packed theater tonight. Stereo Guard here in Patchogue, Long Island. Strong Island Boxing's SPC Championships number two. The first one took place back in the winter, back in January. And the champions have to defend their title within about five, six months, no more than that. They cannot sit on the title. If you don't want to hold the title, then say I'm giving it up, and they'll put it up for grabs. Murphy definitely coming out strong in this round. He's like, you know, he, he called me with a big right hand at the end, I got to get it back. So he's definitely starting the round out strong. You know, he's giving, he's giving me Marvin Hagler vibes with those trunks. Ooh, beautiful right up against the body. Murphy not doing a lot of good body work.
Beautiful uppercut. Liam Murphy putting the pressure on, but falling short a lot of times of that jab by not just an inch or two, but oh, several so inches. Just like you, just as you was talking about falling short with the jab, Liam Murphy threw a jab, fell short, um, and and Brian Vera just threw a jab and a right uppercut and caught him right right flush in the jaw. See, I would like to see Murphy stop leaning in so much because. Trevor is finding a home for that uppercut. Whether he's landing it to the face or to the body, he's landing it. But Murphy right now, coming right back to him. You can tough, definitely tell Vera got some strong hands. He got some heavy hands. If he settles down, showing up his punches, he'll definitely do damage. Liam Murphy trying to get close and land the power shots. I'm, I'm surprised we haven't seen a lot more power shots in this bout. Another close round right here. But I see Vera landing the hardest shots, but Murphy's definitely finishing, oh, finishing off strong. That was a close round right there. How do you have it? We go to the third and final round. Now, right after this round, are you going to wait here until Rebecca comes out? Yeah, I'm, gonna I'm just going to step right in the corner. I'm just going to wait for her here. Make sure right after the fight, you bring her right over. For sure, for sure. I must, I must tell you that with your your boxer Rebecca Goldberg, does she drive in from? She lives on Long Island. No, so uh, she she actually originally from Long Island. Yeah. But she lives in the city, so uh, we all just uh, took the train in. Okay. Ryan, Mer oh, and there they go in the middle of the ring, just coming out swinging. Liam Murphy finally takes it right to him, doesn't leave any room between them. Comes out banging. Murphy switches up for a moment. Let's see if he stays south one. No, he goes back to right hand. It takes a jab to the face. Now Brian Vera takes it inside. Brian Vera has been happier boxing on the outside. Vera and Murphy are just trading right now. They, last round, they're living it all in the ring. This is where you gotta close out the show. You gotta, you gotta, these fights, when they're close, you gotta close out the show. Liam Murphy making a very interesting round here. Ooh, beautiful uppercut. Yes. Vera has been finding, uh, he's been finding that home for the uppercut since the first round. Why? Because Murphy keeps leaning in. Every time Murphy throws that jab, he leans in with his head, and Vera is finding a home for the uppercut every single time. Vera not wasting any punches. He's making every shot count. I, I just wish Vera would follow up that uppercut with that left hook. Murphy come back. Vera answers right back. Murphy definitely looks at the fresher of the two, but Vera is still dangerous. Last 10 seconds, let's see who closes the show. Beautiful uppercut, there we go, the uppercut all day. Those right uppercuts in close. Sir. A thing of beauty from Vera, there's the bell. There's the bell. Bounce over. Great fight, great fight. And I think that that was the most exciting round of the bout. But I think that Vera came on strong he won the first round, two rounds on my, in my book, and I think he won that one. I think he's going to win a unanimous decision here. But we've been wrong earlier tonight. That's the thing. With these fights, you never know what's going to happen. 
All right, all right, Commissioner. I'll see, see you in a little. Happen. I'll see you in a little while. Okay, Jose Guzman getting off headset because he's getting ready to work the next bout. Let's see who wins this one. Cards being marked. I gave each of the first three rounds to Brian Vera by a score of 10 to 9. He may have lost that first round, but I have winning nonetheless 30 to 27. Let's see if the judges are in agreement. Is it going to be a split decision or is it going to be the other way? Again, I got Brian Vera winning this one. 156 novice. Our next one is a championship fight, 146 Elite, the women's SPC title. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the ringside judges have reached a split decision. Split. The winner of this bout, by way of split decision, boxing out of the red corner. Okay, no surprise there. But we're seeing several split decisions tonight. That one I thought should have been a unanimous decision. The last one, Frankie Garcia, was a split decision, which I thought should have gone the other way to Alex Makuka. And we saw a split decision early on with Chase Miller winning a split decision. You know what? That one I could live with. Our next bout... Female 146 women's SPC title. It's going to be Rebecca Goldberg at a victory boxing. Her trainer is my partner here, Jose Guzman. And Morgan Macau out of Church Street Boxing. This happens to be a rematch. And in their first fight, Rebecca Goldberg won in the Ringmasters. That's where they met for the very first time. Ladies and gentlemen, strong out of fight night series to continue. Right here at Sergio Gorgon in our next contest. Being brought in by Cloud9. Go to Cloud9.com.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.net.
That's going to be given to the winner. Kristen Vasquez parading around with the SPC belt that's going to be given to the winner. Remember, this is a rematch. Introducing first, boxing out of the blue corner, representing victory boxing, ladies and gentlemen, Rebecca Goldberg! And her opponent, boxing out of the red corner, representing Kirk Street Boxing, ladies and gentlemen, Morgan McCoo! One forty-six elite women's a rematch that was won in the last fight in the ringmasters by Rebecca, who, when she's not in the gym training, she works as a physician's assistant in orthopedic surgery at Lenox Hill Hospital in Manhattan. Talk about a hobby. And she loves to use her legs, get up, put the jab out, and box. And she is very good at doing that. I asked her if she had any thoughts about going pro. She said, you know what? No. She said she thinks about it, but because she's got such a great career in orthopedic medicine, <laughs> why would you make the, the change? You'd have to be really, really special. I mean, and she's a real good amateur fighter. Don't get me wrong. But when you have a career like that, why should you even think about boxing? I give her all the credit in the world for doing, for following her passion for her hobby and stepping into the ring. I asked her who her favorite fighter is, and she said former featherweight champion Gary Russell Jr who I call Gary once a year Russell because he fights once a year. You know, I said, how'd you get started though in, in boxing? She said a, a friend of hers was getting married and she wanted to get in shape. So she went down to Mendez Boxing in New York City and she said, why don't you come along? And I did, she went along with her and she said she got in the ring and she was hitting the bags and speed bag and she instantly fell in love with it. Well, as I tell everybody, once you fall in love with boxing, once the boxing bug bites you, you get addicted. She has been addicted and that's why she's in the ring right now fulfilling her sports addiction. Round number one in the books. Both of them are about five foot six. Rebecca's had about 16 fights. Doesn't, she said she's lost about two or three of them. She said, but I don't know. I, I never really kept track because I didn't plan on going very far with this. And here we are. Yes, here she is. At Stereo Garden in Patchov, fighting in front of all of you watching all over the U.S. of A. In the second SBC championship put on by promoter Christian Vasquez, this is the tournament that has replaced the New York Golden Gloves, which passed away about six years ago. And it's got some of the finest boxers in the New York metro area. She was born and raised, grew up in Hewlett, New York. Now makes a home in New York City. Trains out of the Bronx. 
with my partner here, Jose Guzman, as her trainer. Nice combination by Rebecca. And if I'm in the corner of Morgan Macau, I tell her you got to stop throwing one punch at a time. She's standing on the outside waiting. There she let her hands go twice, left, right, but then went back again to one jab, single jab. There's another single shot. Not putting on any really meaningful pressure. Jab, misses with the right hand. Rebecca gets out of the way of a couple of shots. I like the bounce in her legs. This is round number two. If you're scoring at home, how do you have it scored? I gave Rebecca the first round, and I see her winning this, boxing very smartly. Macau missed with the left, missed with the right, missed with a swing, sweeping left hook. Trying some of those wild shots. They're all wild by Macau. Fall short with two jabs. Put another round in the books. And it's funny, so opposite, Macau refuses to sit down in the corner. She is standing up, while Rebecca is sitting down. I believe the boxers need to sit down because what happens if you're standing up all the time and then you have a round where you really it's been a tough one maybe the toughest of your career and you cannot stand up between rounds your opponent is going to know that something is wrong because you are sitting down that's something you usually don't do so sit down between rounds and use those 60 seconds to your advantage The very beautiful Stereo Garden nightclub turned into a boxing arena tonight. Packed crowd as they watch Strong Island Boxing's SBC Championships. Which I can't say enough that once you win the SBC Championship, that's great. You get a nice belt that goes with it, which of course is going to go on your wall or mantle, whatever it is at home. But you can't hold on to it. If you're the champ, you got to defend it within about five, six months. No more than that. These guys, this is a rematch. A few months ago, in a tournament called the Ringmasters, Rebecca Goldberg won on a decision. So here they are in their rematch. And Macau is tough. But she is being smothered on the inside and a box, in my opinion, from the outside. She's trying, she's tough, but just falls a little bit short. I give them both all the credit in the world. This happened to be a very evenly matched bout. A chopping right hand, a, a looping right hand by Macau, partially got in. And Rebecca, a lot of bounce in those legs. Gets in, scores, and gets out. Now watch what she does. She'll back up and then walks in. Throws a combination, takes a shot. Now standing in front of Macau. Throws some shots, got to get those hands up. Ducks under a shot. They get in close, they tie up, they pull away. Final moments in this bout. Another good round, I think, for Rebecca Goldberg. And there's the bell, ending this bout. Rebecca Goldberg walks right over to the corner. Gives a congratulatory tap on the shoulder to Morgan McCow. 
I gave Rebecca Goldberg that round. I'm gonna call her a 30 to 27 winner here. But the judges three times tonight have come up with split decisions. I doubt they could do that tonight in this one. While we're waiting for the scorecards, I'm just trying to Waiting for the decision. And here we go. Matt Compatello's got the decision and ready to give it to us. Magnificent Matt, when you are ready, take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, And new six borough champion by way of unanimous decision, boxing out of the red corner, What are these judges watching tonight? I think they like pressure with no punches landing. I don't know, I gotta think I'm gonna have to have a talk with Sonia Lamanakis about having a a seminar. Yet another incredible decision. But you know what? After watching amateur boxing for so many years. I think that's one reason that I, I went into the professional game because I got so tired of watching these three-round judges score fights exactly as they should be. In that one, the boxing was incredible by the Morgan McCow gave a gutsy performance, but Morgan McCow did not win that fight. You know, she was swinging and missing at your fighter for three straight rounds. How did you have it? I'm angry. Three straight rounds I gave Rebecca. She was boxing, throwing combinations. The jab was landing. She was boxing from the outside, winning it on the outside, on the inside. I thought Macau was ineffective. Very gutsy young lady, I must say that. Yeah. Because she forced the action, but she didn't beat her. I don't know where the judges are coming up with these scores tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, joined by next series to confuse right here at Stereo Point in Patchogue, New York. With our next contest, standing for the 156 pound Dallas Division. Our first competitor approaches the red corner at this time. Here is Pedro Coyello! Here comes number 11, 
This one is 156 novice between Pedro Calado out of Freeport Boxing and Mark Chaparro of Westbury Boxing. Two outstanding talents from each one of those gyms with some incredible coaches as well. And I, I will say this, if there is a decision here, and it's a close one, and it doesn't go to Freeport Boxing, we have seen Coach Joe Higgins before go a little bit berserk, and we hope that if it is a decision, the judges get it right this time. I am just shaking my head. Ladies and gentlemen, our next contest brought to you by our sponsor, Life to Long Island and Texas, the 156 pound dollars. Introducing first, boxing out of the red right corner, representing Freeport PA Boxing, here it is, Pietro Collado! And Tony, competing out of the blue corner, representing Westbury Boxing, ladies and gentlemen, This one, Pedro Calado in the red corner with the dark head guard. I'm sorry, with the, yeah, with the dark head guard. And Mark Chaparro out of Westbury Boxing out of the blue corner with the blue trunks. Both guys can punch. And I think that they know each other. Both have devastating right hands. Neither guy very experienced. Maybe a dozen fights or so apiece. In fact, I don't even think they have that many. I think it's a little bit less. I think it's, in fact, it's just under 10 fights apiece. And that's why they're boxing as novices. Once you hit that 10 fight, or if you win a, a tournament, even if it's three, four fights, you become an open class fighter. But these guys are novices, 156 novice. It's just that they've been working around the gyms so often, and I'm always seeing them spar, that I'm almost thinking that they've got a lot more experience than they do. But I've seen them drop guys in sparring with their right hands. And I think it's a real good matchup. Mark Chaparro out of Westbury Boxing and Pedro Colado out of Freeport Boxing. First round is almost in the books. So you kind of know that more than likely, two of the judges are going to have it one way, and other judges are going to have it another way. And there we saw near the end of the round. So Mark Zaparo switch up and go southpaw. <laughs> Joe Higgins in the corner of Pedro Calado. Collado with the white top, dark trunks. And the blue trunks, Mark Chaparro. Very close first round.
And I gave that first round to Pedro Colado, who Joe Higgins sent him out bombing this round. And Chaparro takes a standing eight count. Chaparro trying to make up for that knockdown, although an extra point is not necessarily given in amateur boxing. It's just that they, in, in pro boxing, you take a standing eight counter, you get knocked down. You're losing the round, 10-8, unless you come right back with your own knockdown. In the, the amateurs, they do not do that. But if you take three of them in a round, they will stop the contest. So some very big bombs are landing in this fight for sure. Night, night. Marsha Power definitely doing some good. He, he Marsha Power needs to be moving that head a little bit more. Keep working on that body. Every time he stays in the inside, with his head up in the air, he keeps getting caught with his overhand rights. Chaparro not moving his head at all. He's walking right into that right hand like he just did there and again. And I thought because of those right hands that have been getting through, I thought Calado has now won the first two rounds of this bout. And Chaparro's got to definitely play Catch him. I think the, pro the problem with Shaparo is he's staying in the inside with his head up a little bit too much. And, and Collado is just swinging those big shots up top. And when he goes up top, he's coming right down to the body. So I would like to see a little bit more head movement from Shaparo. He's just standing there fighting uh, Collado's fight. You're watching Strong Island Boxing. SBC, the Six Borough Championships, put on by promoter Christian Vasquez. This is his second SBC, and you've got some tremendous bouts that we've seen already with a lot more to go tonight. And this crowd is lit. It's a standing room only crowd. Loving what they see. Collado comes out bombing again. Joe Higgins told him, do not stop. You've got this but you don't know how these judges are watching it tonight. <laughs> yeah, you'd never know with these judges, never. That's why they say you gotta take it out of the hands of the judges. You've got a tough enough job getting in there and boxing for three rounds. Chaparro had Colado stuck in the corner. They're going at it. Chaparro digs down to the body. Colado backs up. Colado might be hurt. Colado counters him with a left hook. Getting bulled on the ropes. Collado takes another right hand. He's hurt. There may be a standing eight count on the way. I'm surprised. He throws a right hand, takes a hard left hand. Collado misses with a right hand. Chaparro determined here. Wow. Chaparro definitely turned it around. There's your standing eight count. He turned it around. I thought that might be a little bit overdue. Let's see what Chaparro, if he takes advantage of it. Chaparro oh, coming in, bombing right away. Hand. There up goes the mouthpiece. That was a huge right hand by Chaparro. I tell you, Colado has some chin to be taking some of those bombs. I wouldn't want to get hit by one of those. Well, at the start of this fight, we said that these guys throw bombs, and you see it. Colado had those extra moments. Maybe he's coming back 
now. And they trade right up to the bell. What a fight. Beautiful fight. Ladies and gentlemen, our next contest here at Strong Fight Night Series 2 is brought to you by C4 Energy, the champion of energy drinks and apparel boss. It takes place so in the London and Heavy League Division and it is for the Sixth World Championship. Our first competitor approaching the right corner at this time, here is Isaiah Clay.
Every year I'm self-made You can never claim this Never pivot on my bros One thing that I can't switch Watching Strong Island Boxing coming to you from Stereo Garden in Patrick, Long Island, New York. Tonight, the SBC Championships brought to you by promoter Christian Vasquez and these great people here at Stereo Garden and the head of USA Metro, Ms. Sonia Lamanakis who for years has done such a great job with USA Metro. But there's nothing she can do about the judging here tonight. First, boxing out of the red corner, ladies and gentlemen, Isaiah Clay! Boxing out of the blue corner, representing Victory Boxing, here is Kobe Williams! Isaiah Clare against Kobe Williams. And this one is 139 Elite, and this is an SBC title. And it happens to be a rematch And you've got a right-hander against a left-hander here. They met back in the Ringmasters a few months ago with Kobe Williams winning a close decision over Isaiah Clare. And Isaiah Clare did not handle it very well. And my colleague, Jose Guzman, worked with both of the fighters, and it just so happened that he worked with Kobe Williams that night, talked to both guys before the fight, and they decided it was going to be Kobe Williams that he worked with, while some of the other coaches worked with Isaiah Clare. And when Clare lost the bout, he basically doesn't speak to Jose Guzman anymore. And, I mean, I don't get it, but sportsmanship, guys. Nice sharp counter, left hook. The southpaw, that in and out, right jab, Kobe Williams. He's undefeated in his amateur career, 13 fights. Kobe Williams, 24 years old. Isaiah Clare, 21 years old. Isaiah Clare is now boxing unattached, while Kobe Williams is boxing out of victory boxing in the Bronx. They see them measuring each other. Who's going to get the shot in here? They know each other, they know each other's speed, they know each other's power, they know each other's strength. Let's see who capitalizes on that the best. Kobe Williams in the blue trunks or Isaiah Clare in the red. Referee has something to say about don't push. They stand in front of each other, measuring each other. The left jab of one, the right jab of the other. One thing about guys who, who box left-handed and right-handed against each other, you always risk a headbutt. But these guys are such boxers that I think that 
you're really not going to see guys darting in and out. They're boxing each other from the outside. In the red corner tonight is Isaiah Clare. And boxing out of the blue corner is Kobe Williams. Working with my co-host, Jose Guzman. And I thought that Kobe won that first round. 10 to nine. You give 10 points to the winner of the round, nine or less to the loser. Now, especially in professional boxing, if it's just a simple, just a guy wins a round and it's close, you make it 10-9. If he scores a knockdown, you can make a 10-8. But you can win in the pros a 10-8 round on a one-sided round with no knockdown. And they come out again. Kobe Williams in the blue, the southpaw. And Isaiah Clare in the red. They, this is a chess match. You make the move. Next move on to Kings 4. They are thinking, you, you can hear them thinking. And I think somebody who takes an advantage and tries to work on the inside here, tries to score some body shots, will do a lot better. Now the referee has something to say to Kobe. I believe he was talking about holding on the inside. Yes, it was about holding. Because he saw there they were in close, and Kobe stepped back with his hands up to say, see, I'm not holding. And again, he was showing the referee, I'm not holding. And his opponent, Claire, was just told about, watch those shots in the small of the back. On the inside, neither guy is an inside fighter so it can get ugly on the inside this is scheduled as all these bouts are tonight three rounds this one is in the 139 elite class and it's for an SBC title a six borough championships title who's going to come away with the championship Kobe Williams is already the champ this is a rematch they met back in the ringmasters a few months ago with the southpaw in blue, winning a decision. Nice right hook by Kobe. That was definitely the hardest punch of the fight, a sweeping right hook. See on the inside, Kobe is saying, I'm not holding, ref, I'm not holding. And even though this is very smart boxing, it's not the kind of boxing that fight fans <laughs> will, will pay tons of money to see. And you, you have to wonder, is Errol Spence against Terrence Crawford going to be this kind of fight? Or is it going to be an action fight? Is one guy going to really find his way inside and mix it up? That one coming up at the end of July. And they work inside again. They are sloppy on the inside. And from the outside, both are having their problems scoring. And I think whoever scores harder shots, the southpaw a little bit better, faster, more accurate, right hand. And I think that Kobe has won himself yet another round. So after two rounds, I've got a 20 to 18 for Kobe Williams. But as we've seen tonight, the judges, they might go anywhere. Looking into the corner of both guys, they both look very, very relaxed. Blair is sitting down. Kobe standing up.
third and final round. So I've got this 20 to 18 for Kobe Williams in the blue, the southpaw, in a rematch against Isaiah Clare. And these guys, 139 pounds, elite fighters. And this is for an SBC title, which I'll keep telling you, and if you're just joining us now, this is the SBC championships on Strong Island Boxing, which is basically the replacement for the New York Golden Gloves. Gone, our dearly departed New York Golden Gloves left us in about, back in around 2017, Strong Island promoter Christian Vasquez, himself a New York Golden Gloves champion, missed the Golden Gloves so much that he worked and worked and thought about putting together a tournament. And this is his second one here at Stereo Garden in Patchogue, which matches up some of the top amateur fighters from six different boroughs. Staten Island, Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, the Bronx, and he even made a strong island a borough. Good for him. And we've seen some incredible bouts here tonight. This is our 12th bout of the night. We've got 18 bouts, six more to go after this. On a beautiful day on Strong Island, New York. Claire gets on the inside, worked a, a few shots there, now jumps in with a jab, and it is ugly on the inside. We haven't seen any good boxing on the inside. That time a nice right hook from Kobe Williams. You know, if you get two sluggers against each other, it's a great fight. You get a slugger against a boxer, it could be a great fight. But when you get two guys who are thinkers the way these guys are, it definitely becomes a little bit tedious. The fans are appreciating, though, the skill of these young boxers. And remember, it's three rounds. And they're showing some very good skill, except maybe on the inside, where they have a lot of learning to do. Final seconds of the bout. Kobe turns it on in those final seconds. Knows that maybe a flurry could win him the match. He raises his hands. He looks over at Isaiah Clare. Smiles at him. Isaiah Clare did not bother returning a smile or a nod or anything. I gave that final round 10-9. Kobe Williams. I have him winning the bout 30-27. But I'm going to hold my breath. Because what we've seen tonight from the judges, you never know. And again, this is 139 Elite SBC Championship. And we've got a welcome 147 Elite SBC Championship coming up next, which you don't want to miss between one of the most outstanding young amateurs in the state of New York. And we'll tell you about him in just a few moments. Let's see who won this one. Is it going to be Kobe Williams in the blue or Isaiah Clark, Claire in the red? Two guys who used to be teammates, but now apparently don't even want to look at me. Ladies and gentlemen, our ringside judges have reached a split decision.
another winner, split. And new 139 pound Elite Division 6 Barrow Champion by way of split decision. Boxing out of the blue corner, Kobe Williams. At least that was very nice on the part of Isaiah Clare. He came over and gave a congratulatory almost shoulder bump. Now he's going over to the corner of Kobe Williams. Look, they all know each other from the gym. And hopefully they can resume their friendship once again. I got to see if I can get Jose Guzman to get his fighter because he'll be back uh, on microphone with us. Here from Stereo Garden.
And here we go. This is going to be one. I was telling you that you're going to see a very, very gifted fighter. Zante Felton out of Westbury Boxing. This kid is very, he, he's a beginner, but he's a fast learner and a hard worker going up against Wilmer Bueso. And it should be an action fight. Zante Fel Felton loves to get on the outside, but he can throw combinations. He has power. He can do a little bit of everything. So why should you get in and wade in and slug when you have those long arms? You can box and you can punch. Well, if Wilmer Bueso at a Newburgh Boxing is going to do anything, he's got to take the fight right to Felton. Felton measuring his opponent, Bueso, from the outside. And that's good enough for Felton, because he's got those long arms, hard jab, good combinations. Why should you mix it up when you've got those tools? Trained by Joey Rock and Scotty Lopez, two of the very best in the business, both amateur and pro. Not just very best, but two of the most beloved guys in the business. Two characters who always have time for everybody, especially if you want to stop down their gym at the Westbury Boxing Club. This is Strong Island Boxing from Stereo Garden in Patchogue, Long Island, New York for the SBC Championships which each one of these fighters, and you heard me mention to Kobe Williams, he got about five months to defend it. I'll see you again soon. And after he got off the air with me, Kobe Williams said he's looking forward to sitting, to getting back in the gym and defending his championship again. Congratulations on your- Thank you so much. Win with it. You know, that was a, a very, oh. that was a fight with a lot of emotions. There was a lot of emotions involved and you know, we got the victory, but, you know, we fought a great... There was a lot of respect in there between both of them. That's why you didn't see a lot of action. And that's what, that, that's what happens sometimes when we get two high-skilled fighters. There's not a lot of action. Christian Vasquez back on headset with it. One second you go from basically a tuxedo, then you shed the, the, the jacket and everything. You, you put back on your corner. Are you going to be working any more corners tonight? Not tonight, thank God. I am, I am done. <laughs> Best. What a night of boxing. It really has the only some of these judges I'm saying, where are they coming up with these scores? <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna have to be honest, I can't I can't um comment on that because I haven't even really been able to watch the fights. You know, I, at the end yeah. of the day, it's not your fault, you know. Yeah, the, and, I, the and I, yeah, I, I even I go up to all the fighters and say, you know, that this has nothing to do with me. The uh, the outcome. Uh I actually have butterflies for all the fighters. I want them all to win, you know. Yeah. And when they lose I feel bad because I I'm the one that put the match up together, you know what right. I mean? Right. But I'm the big mouth ex-commissioner, and when I see something that I just don't like, yeah, you gotta call it like you see it. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But geez, yeah. But the fights are very entertaining. Yeah, thank you, Randy. I think they, I think all these fights were pretty evenly matched up, and uh, everybody came to fight tonight. You know, when you put a big stage like this for these fighters, they have no choice but to show up. You know, listen, this in the first show is this is this exceeded the first show. Great fights, competitive. We've seen a couple upsets already. Yeah. You know, rematches that we wanted to see. Yes. And it's great. I love it. Thank love you, Jose. It. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm, and I'm grateful for you guys that you even want to be here and do this. I love you guys. Randy, you're a legend in this. Me and Jose are brothers. You're doing a great job. I spoke to Rebecca Goldberg before. Certainly, she didn't think she lost the fight right. in the rematch. So it's one apiece. I said, would you like to do it again? Yeah. She said, absolutely. September 30th, we can run it back. And this time, we're going to bring it to the city. We're going to bring the six world championships to either Queens or Manhattan. We might go to Sony Hall. Um, I was talking to Matt. We're trying to make that happen. I'll talk to you about it, too. You know, so uh, I know you guys do a great thing over there at Boxing Insider for the pros. Uh, hopefully, we could bring maybe one show a year there. So we'll see. But we are in another title bout here. And this one is 147 elite guys. This is Wilmer Bueso against 
Zavante Felton. Defending champion Zavante. You know, um, Zavante, I love Zavante. Yes. This kid, he's strong, he can punch. Man, he got he got all the tools. Yes, he's got a very good, versatile style. He likes to go to the body. He utilizes his jab well. Loves that jab, and that's a great thing. There, there's one fight I would like to see, and it's between two people from two different weight classes. Devontae Felton versus Melvin Martinez. Oh wow, yeah, that would be that would be a great matchup. That that's that a be, match I would like to see. Well, somebody's gonna have to move up or down for that one for this. <laughs> now that would, Mel, Melvin is a technician. He's a tough fighter. He, he hits hard. He can take a punch. And Devontae, to me, has a similar style. You know, it'll, it'll be a very good matchup. I like I like these hats. I'm gonna need one of those hats. Right I got there. you. I got you. Like, Before we I leave. So, so how do you feel about, you know, this is the second time you do this show? How, how do you like the turnout? How do you like the fights? I'm just, I'm just grateful everybody's here. Everybody having a good time. It's packed again. Well, a lot of my friends from high school came out. They're having a great time. I mean, my family, my dad just had a stroke, and he's here in the building. He looks good, I, though. He just looks good. Yeah. Well, yeah. Wilma landed a couple shots right there, three-piece. Wilma's fighting tough right now. Devontae coming come back. back. He nice. comes back every single time. He always has the answer. Yep. Nice jab by Wilma. Wilma's using his jab well. One, one thing I don't like about Devontae's front is that he pulls back a lot. He tries to counter, and he, pull, he does a little pullback, and he gets caught at the end of that jab. Right, too straight up sometimes. See? There we go again. I would like for him to bend his knees a little bit more, move that head a little side to side. Yeah, Wilma's no slouch. This boy's coming to fight. And he's long, too. He has long arms. But he, I just oh. think he doesn't have the... The strength, he's not strong enough to keep the belts on back. And when he does nice throw jab sometimes a combination, he will drop his hands down by his pocket. Yep, I noticed that just yeah. now, yeah. You see, there we go again. If I was Felton, I wait nice for right that jab, throw to the right hand that he just did right now. Nice one, two, Felton hit him with a one, two, nice. That's Ooh, he got gotta, a counter two. That's exactly what I'm telling you he got to do all day. Nice right here, good round, good finish from Felton on that round. That was nice. Beautiful round. That was, a, that was definitely a foul turn round. Roman had good moments in that round, though. Absolutely. Way so. Donna, the ring car girl, she's always great. Now, now round three coming up. Mo moving forward to the third show. Yes. Well, there'd be an award for the fight of the night. Can you know, a lot of these fights are like. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I've been wanting to do it, but I just I haven't had time to even put it together. Okay, Wilma Pueso against Zavante Felton. Coming up to round number three, I've given the first two rounds to the Zavante Felton in this 147 Elite SPC Championship fight. And I think that all... Hi. Felton has <laughs> to do is just get out there and box him and... Off commentating uh, conversation. <laughs> I might even hurt round three, let's go, boys. Excellent competitive matchup. I've given the first two rounds to Devante Felton. Nice shoe shine by Wilma with a follow up and ended with a left hook. See, Wil Wilma does a lot of good work, but I just don't see he's strong enough to keep Felton back. Right, Wil Felton's definitely applying the pressure. He's doing, he's doing more of the work here for sure. He's he, applying the he, pressure. You know who Felton sometimes, sometimes reminds me of Sometimes he does a lot of stuff uh, the Charlo brothers do. You know, and he's strong, too. See, Felton needs to be looking for that jab to the body, because if you, if you look, Blue Corner is picking up his guards. All he got to do is put that jab down to his stomach. Felton definitely putting the pressure on. Wilma's playing the ropes a little too much. If he wants to win this round, he's going to have to step forward and start. I, I, I just don't think Boyce got enough in his tank. You know, to right. really push it. As you can see, uh, Felton is, is pushing the pace. Every, he's coming forward, working the body every single time. Nice he vicious jab, jab right here. Plotler got him on the ropes. Beautiful right, right hand. Round number three. Good. Final First. round of this 147 Elite SPC title. I love that uh, Zavante came here and defended his title, took this title serious. You know, that's what we need. We need more fighters taking these 
title series to make this thing more prestigious, you know? Something that could be really good for these amateurs. Referee Andy Adele doing a great job keeping his distance, letting them work their way out of every inside encounter. Ooh. Roman's trying, man. He, 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 he's not, he didn't come here to lay down. He came here to fight. You know, Roman doesn't have a lot behind his punches, but he's still working. Staying busy. Zvante's definitely the sharper puncher, though. Ooh. Oh, that was a good one. Roman pushed Zvante back. Nice. Zvante turned him around. Here we go. Working the body over the Beautiful. top. Good left hook. See, that's what makes the difference in close fights. Yeah, Even good. though this is not a close fight, but that's what makes the difference sometimes. You get in there, you got to work. Yeah, Zvante staying, staying busy. Landing a big right hand. Over here. That was kind of like a chopping slap that yeah. he just got, yeah. he got he, spoken to by Andy Adele. He's definitely looking for the overhand right, but he, he needs to shorten it a little bit more. Beautiful right hand by Felton. That's one thing. When, when Felton gets you in the ropes, he's going to try to jump on you. Yeah, he let those hands go. He throws more than three at a time. Final bell coming up. Beautiful. Ooh, that's big right the, hand from Felton. That's the strong. short right hand I was talking about. Nice right fight, there. guys. Yeah. Guys went at it. Zavante definitely took that one. Great job. Uh, I'm gonna give that belt out, guys. Well, let's see how this one goes. Is it going to go to Wilmer Beso or Zavante Felton, who's defending his SBC championship? Here we go. The winner of this bout, by way of unanimous decision, and still, still. 147 pounds. No question about it. Six world champion out of the red corners of London, Belton. So. Tonight's car just moving along. And we've got a title retention there. Our next contest takes place in the 176-pound elite division 
and it's for the Six World Championship. Introducing first thing inside of the blue corner, here is James Shinori. Title 176 light heavyweight between Ryan Diaz Diaz boxing. This happened to be a rematch, and James Denari of Victory Boxing. The man out of the blue corner, James Gennari. When he's not in the gym, and James is in the black trunks with the yellow stripes, James is a New York City firefighter. But both these guys have white tops, black trunks, black shoes, and black head guards. So those yellow stripes that will be the difference between both of these guys. 176 pound elite for another SPC championship, the 14th bat of the evening. On a night of some incredible amateur boxing. I'm fortunate enough that I go to many amateur boxing shows and we've seen nothing but some exciting bouts tonight save for a few of the questionable decisions we've we've seen neither guy running both willing to stand in front of the other and let him go Promoter Christian Vasquez with yet another sensational card. Strong Island Boxing, SPC Championships. 18 bouts tonight, and I believe 10 of them were for the SPC title. And a two other ones were to an eliminator where the winners will fight for the championship next. Ryan Diaz of Diaz Boxing. Again, James Gennari of Victory Boxing. 
who is the New York City firefighter. Both guys dig it in there, working the body very nicely. Pounding away on the inside, referee Andy Adele letting them work. Too many amateur referees step right in all the time, every time they get close, even if they're not holding and make them break. Andy Adele lets them work. Nice use of the jab there. Keep in mind, there's no more important punch, especially in amateur boxing over three rounds, than the jab. Final seconds, round number one in this light heavyweight contest, 176 pounds. There's the bell. I thought a, a very close round. With James Denari, a New York City firefighter against Brian Diaz. And again, the basically the one way to tell them apart tonight, because they both have on dark headguards, white tops, black trunks, black shoes. Denari, the firefighter, has yellow stripes around his thigh area, around the lower portion of his trunks. And they both have a fair amount of tattoos. But Gennaro, Gennari has been using a very smart jab. Both of them, their primary weapon tonight has been the jab. Denari picking off some shots. Now they mix it up inside, then pull away. So far through a round and a half, most of the bout has been fought at close distance, but not inside, within punching room of each other. Nice jab by Janari. Right hand misses. That one looked like Ryan Diaz was trying to do the shoulder roll. Ryan Diaz also has a very nice jab. There's a hook. Attempts to land a hard right hand. Takes a few shots in return. Picks some of them off. Now they work on the inside. Some nice exchange going on there. I thought Gennari gets the best of it. Partially blocks a hook. Nice action on the inside. Right hand by Gennari. Works the body. Questionable shots right around the belt line. Combination upstairs. Missed with the left. Got in with the right. The judges are going to have, I think, quite a job here. Let's see who can finish this round stronger. Gennari works on the inside. See, it's flurries like that that sometimes the judges look for. And it looks here like Ryan Diaz slows down a little bit, but he launched that left hook. Looks like he's still got some juice on his punches. Veteran referee Andy Adele. A packed crowd here at Stereo Garden in Patchog. Now Andy Adele said something there to to Gennari, not sure what it was that he said. Gennari forces Ryan Diaz to the ropes, works on the inside, still coming up punching, trying to steal this round. Final seconds to go in, in the round. Diaz lands a smashing left hook, takes another shot, 
Round number two ends. How do you score that round? Randy Gordon along with Jose Guzman, who's been working several of the corners tonight. And he is in the corner of the New York City firefighter tonight. Who well, I've got up 20 to 18. But I mean, it could easily, you give one round, one way. Instead of two to nothing, it's one one. Third and final round of this title bout. 176 pound elite SBC title bout. And if you just happen to be joining us, well, welcome to the show. This is Strong Island Boxing, brought to you by promoter Christian Vasquez. SPC standing for Six Borough Championship. And the six boroughs all around New York. New York City, Brooklyn, Queens, Staten Island, the Bronx, and Long Island. No, you're saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. When did Long Island become a borough of New York? It became a borough when Christian Vasquez made it a borough. Rough inside fight being made by James Denari. Big swing and a miss by Denari. Takes a left uppercut to the body. Now they mix it up inside. Referee Andy Adele doing a splendid job letting them work. Double jab by Ryan Diaz trying his best here. I think he may be running a little bit short on stamina, but not on heart. Trying one punch at a time on the inside. <laughs> right hand. Being smothered by Gennari, who just keeps moving his hands. There's the end of a splendid action-packed fight. Light heavyweights, James Benari, New York City firefighter, against Ryan Diaz of Diaz Boxing. Now, I had it. 30-27 for James Benari. Perhaps Ryan Diaz won one round here. I do not see him winning the fight. But Ryan Diaz has nothing. He does lose this. has nothing to be heard about, angry about, whatever. He was in against a very tough, determined James Gennari. 
we shall see in just a few moments who won this fight. And coming up after this one, there were three bouts to go, four bouts to go. 165 East. Or Elite, sometimes we say East. East or West. This happens to be in the I mean, I thought his greater work rate, you gotta move your hands in the amateurs. And he did, he moved his hands on the outside, on the inside, never stopped working. James Gennari is now the SBC 176 pound elite champion. And we are down to our final four bouts. 165 elite coming up next. And some words from the New York City firefighter. Four to go, four to go. 
I have this one is 165 to beat for the SPC title. Hey, hey, Commish, I'm not gonna lie. This is the fight that I've been waiting for really? all night. This is gonna be fireworks. Okay, tell us why about each guy. Colin Clark, nonstop action, comes forward, nonstop, strong kick, and he can punch, he can take a punch. You know, Israel Bailey from the Bronx, big puncher, you know. He's, a, he's he's natural, you know, he's an athlete. He hasn't been boxing for a long time, but he's a big puncher and it's gonna be a great fight. It's gonna be an action-packed fight. That's all I expect to, right now. Have they ever faced each other before? This is gonna be the first fight, first time. These guys are elite fighters, 165 elite. And this is both for the, this is their first time both fighting three minute rounds. They just became elite. First time? Yes. So Christian, I'm calling it right now. This is going to be the fight of the night. Uh, I agree. I agree. These are, I, these I guys think, are. I've been waiting for this fight. You have no idea. Yeah, these guys are both. They love boxing. Here we go. Let's go. It's for the 165 pound elite division six world championship. This is exciting. This is exciting. This is good. This, time, this is crazy. This is definitely Collins' hometown. Izzy's coming from the Bronx. Vamos is deep in here tonight. <laughs> oh man, fireworks already. This is like a main event right here, boy. Everybody's wilding out. This is crazy. Everybody's on their feet right now. Wow. They both out for this fight. They know they're both in for it. Colin Clark with the red head guard fighting out of the red corner. And Israel Bailey out of the South Box Boxing Club. Go right here. 165 East. Elite. These guys are elite. But it's the first time that they are boxing three minutes. Oh, beautiful jabs already. Both have power. They both got to be careful. They go, both got to make uh, smart decisions here. They don't want to get caught. That was a beautiful step to the side right here from Colin. Colin. Beautiful over here, right? Like I said. This is gonna be bombs, bombs wow. away. Beautiful. Wow, good body. Israel oh, Valley. Crispy combinations. With the black head guard, Colin Clark with the red head guard, being very Ooh, cautious here in the first round, but they are letting shots go. Oh man, these guys letting their hands go. Thank you, thank you. You know, they're both highly skilled. They're making each other miss and responding right back. This is exactly what I expected. Ooh, good solid left hook. I'm calling. I gotta say, so right now it's pretty even. Yeah, they both landed a couple good shots this round. Beautiful jab left hook from Izzy. Look at that double left oh, hook. Oh, right big left hook from both of them. They're both exchanging. <laughs> Colin is, is controlling more of the middle of the ring. While Izzy is moving side to side, trying to look for an opening. I have to say, Jose, you're a very good commentator, man. You're a natural. But I'm, I'm running for the bus. Yeah, right, Commissioner? Randy's a legend. Ooh. Ooh. Again. Ooh, he's pressing, he's pressing now. 
Colin throws is the response. He's invited to the middle of the ring. Colin Clark inviting his opponent in, telling Bailey, come on, come in. Oh, good three combo. He was going over here right. Oh, they're going back and forth. Izzy definitely got that better, the better of that exchange. And he's moving around beautiful with that jab. I think that might win him the round. Very close round because Colin's pressing the action, but Izzy definitely has his moments. Beautiful. Wow, great exchange. Beautiful jab back. Then what's making the difference for me is that jab from Izzy. Yeah, Colin staying busy on the inside. Beautiful left of boom. Now, see what's gonna come, what's gonna happen is whoever has the better gas tank is gonna win this fight. Right now they're both fresh, but I wanna see that third round. Who has more left in the gas tank? Ooh, three from Colin. Some solid shots from Izzy. Good first round. Very competitive round. Listen, that first round, some judges are gonna give it to Colin. Some judges are gonna give it to Bailey. Bailey. Yep, I, I agree. Close round, close round. It's how you judge it, it's how you look at it. Colin definitely put the pressure up. Israel got a cut. That's not good. That's not good. So we have a cut over the right eye of Bailey. Oh sugar. We don't want to see that. That might that might stop the fight. We don't want that. This is too competitive fight to have it be stopped right now. It's right on the island too. <laughs> Green car girls are having fun tonight. I know this, if it continues like this, there is going to be a split decision. We've seen about four split decisions tonight. Yeah. What a competitive first round that one was. Let's see who comes I, I, out strong. I want to see how Bailey's going to react to this cut. Yeah. You know, hopefully, Colin, hopefully they don't see it. Let's keep this going. Colin sees blood, so let's see. Nice stiff double jab by Colin Clark. Make, might make Bailey just a little more aggressive now, knowing that he has a cut. Nice right hand. Colin's stepping in. He's stepping in definitely with some good combinations. Ooh, Bailey with a nice left hook. Three points going with some speed right there. Look at the hands wow. of both of these guys. These guys are going at it. This one is for the 165 Elite SBC title. Beautiful right now. Traded punch. Wow, they really traded punches right now. They both want it. This is definitely going to be an interesting fight to score. Beautiful right hand by Conor Clark. See, right now this is the Matador versus the Bull. Who's the Bull? Conor Clark. Who's the Matador? Hey, it's real there. So, who's going to do the better work? Who's going to take control? Right now, I don't see Colin slowing down. So, that's going to play an effect in that third round. Beautiful. Colin Clark, tell him, come on, let's go. But, yet again, it's not good that he's eating those right here. Colin's family is heavy in this crowd right now behind us. Bailey's definitely, I think he got that little edge right now in the round, he's laying him off. Oh, shit, right hand by Colin. Right hand by Clark. Okay, this is going back and forth, man. This is a great fight. Just exactly what I thought it was going to be. And we got blow. He's got to come underneath Colin. Colin's got to come underneath. He's not coming underneath enough. enough. I'm seeing something happen here. Colin is starting to take over the, the, this round. The tide is actually changing right now. Yeah, Israel is backing up a little bit too much without being effective. Oh, he landed a nice jab there, but Khan's throwing punches and punches. Israel's it, throwing it, right back to yeah. him. Good uppercut, right, 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 right. Khan. The difference is the body weight from Khan. That's just making it is the body weight. You're right. Oh, right, doctor coming in. Doctor's coming in. We're going to check that cut. Got a little too much blood on him. You know, from our angle, with the light pining on right down, it's tough to see how bad that cut is. Or not it, it, it's probably a small cut. They're going to let it go. They're letting it go. Let's go. The crowd is there. The crowd loves it. Oh, my God. Fireworks in Long Island. 
Bless to Eddie Diaz. Who wants some more? This is definitely one of the biggest fights ever here. Who wants some more? Oh, right here. Big right here for both of them. Both of them landed big, big shots. Who wants it? Traded power. This is an even close round. Wow. I hey, say Colin Colin is talking to him. Let's, he said, let's go. Colin definitely, I think he slightly won this round. But it was it was close, man. Great freaking round. Wow. I, I must say, it's probably dead even right now. Yep, I'm with you. Dead even. Both of these guys are bringing it. Remember what I said in the beginning. It's all whoever has the best. The better gas tank in the last round. That's who's gonna win this fight. Well, let's see. Let's see how this right, third round. Right now, I'm looking at the corners. Colin is not even breathing hard. He's not breathing hard. Is he? You see his stomach moving up and down. He's definitely breathing a little bit hard. So let's see. Def Colin Carr is definitely the fresh air of the two. <laughs> I love this shit. Thank you, Crystal. This bout could Get be down. even. This bout could be even as we go into the third and final round. Championship round, guys. Championship round. Colin Clark from Vamos Boxing. And Israel Bailey putting on a tremendous fight. Israel Bailey out of South Box. A tremendous fight. Let's go. They're letting the fight go. Cup's not big enough. Let's Last. go. Who wants it, guys? Double jab from Colin. Quick shot, check hook from Bailey. Landed. You know, Bailey's doing exactly what he got to be doing. He, he knows he's kept. He knows who he's going to have to do. Beautiful left hook by Bailey. Bailey. And Colin got a chin. Oh, left hook right here by Colin. And we got blood on those like Here's the, Oh, shit. Here's the question. Can Israel Bailey be effective by backing up and boxing? I don't know. Right now, I see the tide changing a little bit. But Bailey's still dangerous. Colin's an iron worker, man. This guy, you need to hit him with a bat. He, oh, oh, big right, right here. Right hand. Wow. Colin Clark. Really putting on a show that tonight. That was a pullback right here. Wow. Right now, it's who wants it more. Whoa. He spit the mouthpiece out. I'm putting it back in. He's ready. No, you can't. You can't do that. No, he did. <laughs> no, he just spit it out again, I believe. No, it's in his mouth. It's good. Beautiful. Oh, 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 oh shit. Oh, he's hard. Oh, he's hard. Big right hand for Bailey. Wow. Big that's right a, for that's Bailey. a big shot. Colin wow. Bailey yeah, worked in the He had Bailey hurt, and then Bailey, Bailey hit with a big and right he's hand. Still hurt. Hurt his he's still hurt. He's still hurt. Keep your hands up. Protect yourself. Keep your hands up, boys. You guys hit too hard. I don't like watching this stuff, man. I like both of these guys a lot. You're not just looking. Wow, what a fight. At the fight of the night, you're looking at the average for fight of the year so far. Wow. Both guys exhausted, but hearts of champions. Oh, man. Hand by wow. Man, Clark is landing some stuff, too, right now. This is a great round. Bailey is exhausted, but that heart of a champion is coming out. Hard right hand by Bailey, and then he swings and misses with the left hand. Colin marches him down. Ooh. They won't let up on each other. The crowd what? went crazy. What a fight. War in Long Island. <laughs> War in Long Island. <laughs> exactly what I expected. Uh, this is a great referee, man. He let this fight go. He's letting these guys fight. Unbelievable. Oh, big, oh, big left by Colin. Bailey landed some big shots. Collins bouncing back, landing some big shots. To the end, big left hook by Collins. Big, another one. Got Bailey on the go. Big right by Beautiful Bailey. Fight. What a way to finish. Beautiful fight. Wow. What a fight. Wow. Holy cow.
Oh my God, I haven't seen a fight like that live in a long time, not even in the pros. Beautiful fight. Kristen, I'd like to see the crowd throw things like dollar bills into the ring right hey, now. I want to see this one again. Unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen, you just witnessed not the fight of the night, the fight but of the year. Amateur fight of the year. Wow. Three rounds cannot get better than that. How are the judges going to see this one tonight? Wow. I got to say it's 29 28 for Colin Clark. That's a close fight, man. I would have won. Wow. I don't know when was the last time I seen an amateur fight like this. And I, I must say, the referee did a great job. The referee did a great job. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be both guys with a congratulatory handshake and hug over and over again. Oh. Hey, woman wins, woman loses this fight, should be proud. They should definitely be proud. So should you lose. There's no loser in this fight. There is, there's a winner and no loser. Is it gonna be from Vamos Boxing, Colin Clark, or is it gonna be Israel Bailey from South Box? 165 pound elite champion. SBC title on the line. Rollins versus Long Island. Here we go. Our ring announcer. Matt Complicello. Magnificent Matt. We saw, we saw blood. We saw people getting hurt. Non-stop punching. Wow. guys over here they just did such an incredible job Israel Bailey out of South Box wins the title
Ladies and gentlemen, the action continues right here at Strong Island Fight Night Series 2, emanating from Stereo Garden. Our next contest is a super heavyweight novice bout. It is brought to you by Cloud9, Life to Long Island, and Apparel Boss. Introducing our first competitor, making his way to the blue corner at this time, here is Jermaine LaBranche. Ladies and gentlemen, his opponent in this super heavyweight contest approaches the red corner at this time. Here is Xavier Wilcher! We got some, we got the big boys now. Big guys! Heavyweight! Three bouts to go. This one's a super heavyweight novice. Oh, this is the rematch. This is the rematch from last show. Xavier Wiltshire from Heavy Hitters Boxing against Jermaine LaBranche from Starrett City Boxing. So if you remember last time, it was Jermaine's first, uh, well, Xavier Wiltshire's first fight, and he looked at like a veteran in there. Okay. So this is gonna, this is the rematch. I, I, I'm looking forward to it. Amateur rematches, I find, and, and you know about this, you had a, at least I had, one tonight. I had a bunch. Yes. I had a bunch of rematches. Introducing competitors first, boxing out of the blue corner. Representing Star Red City Boxing, here is Van LaBrand! And his opponent, boxing out of the red corner. Representing heavy hitter boxing, Xavier Wilcher! Xavier Wilcher with the, let's say, the red gloves. And Jermaine LeBranch out of Starrett City wearing the blue gloves. Now these are heavyweights. You don't want to get up at this point, get yourself, pour yourself a drink, get yourself some coffee, whatever. You want to sit right where you are. Oh, the I don't know, right away. Jermaine LaBranch. Blue gloves. Xavier Wiltshire. Red gloves. These are super heavyweights. Novice. Beautiful right hand from Wiltshire. LeBranch is definitely trying to push the pace a little bit. He just got to settle down. That beautiful jab, beautiful jab. LeBranch has a beautiful jab. If he keeps popping into his face, standing in the middle of the ring, I think he'll do it very good. He has good range. Oh, beautiful right here for Rocha. This is already turning out to be 
a better fight than the first time we met. Give it time, give it time. But this is only the first round. Now, super heavyweights tend to, especially if they put out a lot in the first round, their gas it, tanks have very, to very slow down. small yes. gas tanks. Because they're carrying around so much weight and strength and bulk. You're watching Strong Island Boxing from Stereo Garden in Patchogue, Long Island, New York. Oh, beautiful angles. Lucha just stole the round right there in those last 15 seconds. That was a good round. That was a good way to end the, to end the round. So definitely Rocher 10-9. Okay, again, we've seen some strange decisions tonight. That was only round number one. I don't know who's going to win this one, but these are heavyweights. Don't blink. With heavyweights, it takes one shot. I would like to see the branch keep it in the middle of the ring a little bit, move around, move in circles behind that jab. He's backing up. He's backing himself up to the ropes a little bit too much. And that's what Rocher thinks. Uh, you know, that's how he stole the round at the end right there. Beautiful work back. Beautiful work from LeBranch in the corner. LeBranch doing a lot of the better work this round. See, like he's staying in the middle of the ring. That's his fight right there. Xavier Wilcher at a heavy hitter's boxer. He's the one with the red gloves. The man of the blue gloves, Jermaine LeBron. I like what I'm seeing from LeBron in the second round. He's taking a lot. He's controlling the round a lot better. But he got to uh, keep, keep it in the middle of the ring. That's where he does his best work. You see LeBron step back and take a couple of deep breaths. Yeah, so that means like... We said that the heavyweights, while they could bring it, they don't have the best stamina. And sometimes it gets so wild and almost ugly, we call them slobber knockers. <laughs> exactly. You see, same story again. Backs up against the ropes. And Rocha probably stole the round. Now let's see what happens. They're in deep water. Round number three. As you can see, if you look at if you look at the corners, you can definitely tell both guys are breathing hard. If you look over at LeBranch's corner, he's getting over here. Give him a little fan work with the, with the towel. They're doing everything but putting an oxygen mask on. Meanwhile, in Rocha's corner, he looks nice and fresh. Yes, but he's got to move his hands a little bit more. Yeah. 
Beautiful. See, LeBranch always starts off the round very good. Oh, somebody was banging in the ring over there. Yeah, I'm not sure what that was about. Did you catch that? A fan just went under, got close to the ring, and started banging on the ring. I don't know if you remember years ago in Vegas. Remember Fan Man? Oh, big fan! Look at this! Big fan! He doesn't know where he is! Big right hand! Oh, man. Roadshow just landed that big right hand. Just like you were saying, Randy. These big boys. They land. Oh. Whoa. I see, I see, gone. A, I see gone. a stop. Oh, it's coming. shit. I see a stop. It's coming. I walked in at a good time. Xavier getting loose. Oh. Big shots on the branch. Another eight count for LeBranch. Wow, great job, Xavier. Oh, big right hand. It's over. Wow, Xavier's displaying wow. a lot of power. Xavier just displaying a lot of power. He's putting himself in the rankings right now for an SBC contender shot. Wow. What an ending. Wow. Man, what a night. That was a great, that was a big shot. Wow. That's why you can't never sleep in a heavyweight fight. Exactly. And you had pointed out at the start of this round that Wiltshire looked in much better condition than LeBranch. A hundred percent. He looked at the fresher fighter and he showed it at the, in the last round. That, and that's how you, that's how you close up the show right there. I mean, that was a great stoppage right there because, you know, we don't want nobody to get hurt. We don't want to go home nice, uh, safe and sound and healthy. So that was a great stoppage definitely by the referee. When they give a standing eight count in the amateurs, they usually, once they finish seven, eight, they look at the guy, then they wave him on. In the pros, they give him what we call the sobriety test. Walk to me. Walk to me. Walk Go to, to the, the right. right. Yes. Uh, do, do you like that? I don't see that done in the amateurs. I do. I like it a lot. I mean, in the pros, I, I understand why they do it. In the amateur, I'm, I've never seen it. You know, it depends on the rough league you get, but I've never seen it. Because looking at LeBranch right after that knockdown. He was hurt. He took you could see his legs were almost quivering. You could see he was out of it. I think a sobriety test would have said he doesn't have to take any more shots. I, I mean, it was, listen, it was a great fight. It was a great fight, but like I said, uh, Red Corner looked at the fresher fighter. Well, we've seen a, a few outstanding bouts in a row. That last one before this, Israel Bailey had my, my head is still <laughs> thinking about wow, that. that was good. In one minute and 20 seconds of the third round, my way to RSC, Xavier Wilson! Ladies and gentlemen, the next contest of Showdown Playwright Series 2. 
This is gonna be an amazing fight okay. right here. This is Devil, uh, this is Melvin Martinez versus Peter Latore. They both fought each other twice already, so it's gonna be a great fight. I expect the war. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is for the Dubai Long Island Clean Water Service. And it is for the 156 pound elite division six borough championship. Introducing the competitors first, boxing out of the red corner, representing Westbury Boxing Club, Peter Latour! And his opponent, boxing out of the blue corner, representing Chance Boxing Club, he is a reigning defending 156 pound in the division six for Melvin Martinez, who is the SBC champ against Peter Latore. Peter Latore out of Westbury Boxing Club. This is going to be a very exciting fight. Uh, this is the third time they meet each other. Uh, so far, uh, um, Melvin Martinez have won, has won both of them, but they've both been very exciting fights. So it's gonna, I expect another action-packed fight from them. 156 elite SBC title. Melvin Martinez is the champion here. The tour is starting out pretty strong. Oh, that's a little elbow right there. Latori in the red. Red head guard, red trunks, and red gloves. One thing that I like about uh, Melvin Martinez is from the, right there in the blue corner, he, he does very good body work in his fights. You know, actually, his favorite fighter is Salvador Sanchez. See, there we go. Left foot to the body. He's going to keep using that left foot to the body, and he's, gonna, he's probably going to slow, slow him down. But Latore is also a great fighter, and he always brings it. I'll say this about both guys. Their coaches tell me they are in the gym early. They stay late. Uh, both of these guys, are, they're very hungry. You know, and 
they got very good ring IQ. And, you know, like I said, Melvin's already 2-0 against Notorious, so Notorious is definitely going to try to prove himself. We are in Long Island. This is his hometown, and he definitely might, he wants to get a win in his hometown. Latori in the red, southpaw, getting under a shot. Now he turns around and boxes right-hander. You're going to see him box more as a right-hander than as a southpaw. You know, these are two guys that the same way they fight in the first round is the same way they're going to fight in the third round. These guys don't, do not slow down. Beautiful left hook to the body by, by Melvin. That's, that, that's, that's a very effective weapon that, that he's always had. That Isn't was it? a terrific left hand to the body. Oh, beautiful right hook by Latore. I would like to see Melvin, after he throws the shots, to change his height. Beautiful left hook to the body by Melvin. You know, Latoria, uh, uh, there he goes again as a southpaw. And he's less effective as a southpaw yes. than he is as a right-hander. Yes, I agree. What I like about Melvin, uh, Melvin is those little short shots he's landing. He's not, they're not hard shots, but they're effective shots. So there you go. Little short shots. They're beautiful left hook to the body by Melvin. It's, it's like when Latoria ever falls off balance. Whatever foot happens to be out front, he just stays like that. See, he switched up just like that. You know, what's making the difference is uh, Memo Martinez has his feet planted every time he throws a shot. So when he lands, he's landing those good little short shots that are effective. Meanwhile, Latoria, he switches from left to righty, and he's not being as effective as he should be. Okay, I give that first round to Melvin Martinez. And I think that Peter Latore has to pay a little bit of catch up here. I would definitely like to see Latore stay right a little bit more. And he's landing some good overhand rights. Because Melvin Martinez, sometimes after he throws, he stays right there. So I would like to see Latore throw that overhand right a little bit more after his combination. Round number two in this 156 pound elite battle for the SBC title between the champion oh, Melvin beautiful, Martinez beautiful body and Peter Latore. There we go. That's what I want to see from Martinez. I want to see him change his height up and down. See, I don't like to see Latore when he's lefty. He's not as effective, like you said. That Every time he's lefty, that's when Melvin does his best work. See, there you go. He's righty. He does good work. They righty. That's the fight he has to be fighting. That's when he gets Melvin problems. Unless you are really... A lot of guys cannot turn around and box from the other side. I feel like it confuses you sometimes. You lose something defensively, and many times you lose something offensively. Oh, little rough how task. This is what he doesn't see. He's right. Great work by him. I just wish he could sit down a little bit more on the inside. Work the body a little bit. Oh, beautiful right here, Mar Martinez. Martinez out of Champs Boxing. He's showing us why, up to this Ooh, point anyway, right hand by Martinez again. why he's the champ. He's just very technical. I love it. I love it. I, I, remember, I was telling you, Martinez uses that, those body shots from the first round. As you can see, the Torre is already slowing down. He's not as effective as he was before. He, he definitely slowed down. And now you see Martinez picking it up. 
See, there we go, back to the body. That's what making that's what's making the difference in the fight. It's definitely Martinez's body work. And you know what? We've seen 16 other bouts tonight, and this might be the one bout. Oh, beautiful. We've body seen work. more good Ooh. body punches. Listen, like they say, kill the body and the head will go. And that's what we're seeing right now. We see how Latoya has slowed down, all because of the body work. Beautiful bird by Melvin. You can hear you can hear the corner from Melvin Martinez asking him to go to the body. Because they're they're being very effective with that. But another round in the books. And another good one for Melvin Martinez. You know, he's been depositing those body shots from the first round and it's paying off because Latore has slowed down tremendously. And this in a title defense of his SPC title. Now, we have seen some terrific battles tonight. But, but Malachi Thomas winning a split decision here now, a third bat of the evening in a 147 elite eliminator. That was another great fight. Beating Mel Juan Cisco. Ex excellent fight. And hey, our opening bout of the season, 139 elite between Samuel Ayada Chico taking a decision over Steve Mojica in a barn burner that had people nice. basically jumping out of their seats. Last round, championship round. Oh. No, 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 no. <laughs> Whoops. Definitely some frustration. I think that's exactly what that is. Melvin, Melvin is definitely comfortable in there. You know, he's moving around at his feet. Oh, beautiful left hook to the back. See, Latore knows he's behind, so he's gonna try to bring it this round. But I wish he would I wish, I wish he would stay righty. Because when he's lefty, he just gets hit a little bit too much for, for me. Beautiful uppercut by Melvin. Melvin's just so technical. Beautiful, beautiful work by Latore. In the red shorts, red gloves, red head guard is Peter Latore against the champion, Melvin Martinez, 156 pound elite champion. You know, Melvin is just being more effective. He's bouncing on his toes, looking for his shots, and he's taking them where he needs to. Beautiful body work by him. He hits, gets out the way. Beautiful right hands by Melvin. What a show by Strong Island Boxing and Christian Vasquez tonight. You know, Martinez is just picking him apart right now. Melvin just a little bit too sharp tonight. But Melvin is still, he, he still looks like the fresher fighter, like he was fighting the first round. Beautiful step right here. And once again, Latori switching up this any old time, any which way. Latori is a great, he's a good fighter. He just needs to decide whether he wants to be left or righty. And when he's righty, he does his best work. But tonight, um, Martinez is just a better fighter. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And the reason he just did that, he spun around like a cop because his feet are just not planted correct. Beautiful right hand by Martinez. Martinez closing this the way you gotta close it. When you're a champ, that's what you do. Beautiful fight. Oh, 
excellent job by the champ. Both guys gave everything they had. Both guys gave everything they had. So, I've got to think that without question, Melvin Martinez is going to return, retain his title tonight. What did his pick found in the championship? SBC title. The Six Borough Championship. We have seen 10 excellent title fights tonight. And amateur boxing doesn't get much better than this. In my career, I've covered no less than perhaps three dozen Golden Gloves fights. I've covered the Olympics. And we've seen some terrific cards. But tonight, right from the opening bell, right to the... This one here was the 17th fight. There's one more to go. Let's see who wins this. Let's see. Scorecard is being gone over. Is it going to be a split decision? Is it going to be the champ retaining his title? Is it going to be Melvin Martinez, the SBC champ, retaining that championship? Or is it going to be Peter Latore from Westbury Boxing becoming the champ? Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this match, by way of this decision, and Senator, one of the reasons how they leave the six world champion, Melvin Martinez! Well, on my card, I had each of those rounds, 10-9, for the champion Melvin Martinez. I thought he did a little bit more in each one of them. You know what? There may have been one that he lost, but each time when the bill rang and I put my pen down, I didn't really have to think about it. I thought that Melvin Martinez really looked like a champion. He boxed with glass, used the jab, used his combinations. And I think that Peter Latore fought with all the heart in the world. And I think he's got to go back to the gym. And I think he has to straighten some things out. And if I'm Scott Lopez or Joey Rock, his two trainers who love him to death, they got to tell him, stop turning around. Yes, box right-handed, box left-handed, but stop playing Marvin Hagelin here. I mean, I, I, every time he was right, he did his best work. I, I would just, I, I would love for him to stay uh, as a right-hand fighter because he does good when he's fighting. Well, we got one more bout to work together tonight. I've had a lot of fun with you. You put up with my rooting for my fighter. <laughs> I loved it, though. I you left it. me here for a while. Joey Rock joins us here. Close fight. And, and Joe, put this on for a sec. Put this on. Put the head guard. Watching this fight, and we're joined by Joey Rock, one of the head trainers in all of the amateurs, with Westbury Boxing, with Peter Latore. Why does your guy constantly switch up? It's very frustrating, because when he goes southpaw, I think he's less effective. It's like, I said, Joey, you gotta get on this guy's case. Turn him around, make him stay there. He constantly shifts in the gym, and he does it correctly. In the fights, for whatever reason, he stays squared up. In the gym, it's flawless, it's seamless, and you never know when he's coming. In here against Melvin, he gets jammed up, and I don't know why. Because Marvin has that that skill where he was just ready for it, and because we thought that that Peter was losing something every time he turned around, I thought he lost a little something. Yep, he's he losing his balance. But he's you gotta listen, tell him all the best. He he performs with a set of cojones on him. I, I told you he's got three. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? He must. He does. Absolutely. 
Thank Joey Rock, always great seeing you. Thank you. Appreciate uh, your time. God bless you. We love watching you in the corner. You do a great job. In this Thank game. you. My pleasure. Joey Rock. Here with us. We got the champ belt. Heavyweight Elite. 
Melvin Martinez, a very intelligent young man, and he said no. You know, he knows the dangers of boxing. He's not going to get back in there tomorrow. Just he, he said, I'm going to take a little rest. I'll be back. That, that's a smart guy right there. Derek Padone of Ramos Boxing against Kenny Ocean from Stout Boxing for the Super Heavyweight Elite. This is gonna be another war right here. Heavyweight can't go to sleep. Perdon, you know, another great fighter. He always brings it. He's gonna bring it, you know. And Kenny Ocean is a very experienced heavyweight. So let's see, see. let's see what happens. Here we go. Main event. As you remember, last time we had Josh Popper versus Perdon, which was an action-packed fight and Perdon always brings it, so we can expect a great fight here. And you know, Perdon always brings it the fans. The over-under on this is one round. One round. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I've never seen heavyweights at, like this be able to dance around for more than a round. I would like to see Perdon, you know, take his time a little bit more. It's his first time fighting three minutes. You know, it, it's a big change. So I would like to see him settle down a little bit, not blow his gas tank. They are throwing bombs. I think the first one that lands a good shot is going to go home the winner. You know, Kenny Ocean is the big boy. He looks like the bigger guy in there. So, let's see what happens. But Perdon is definitely very explosive on his feet. They're both big guys. Derek Perdon is a monster. Well, one thing about Perdon is that he comes. He, he's going to be nonstop. He comes nonstop. This first round is going to be a strength and stamina sapper. He's just going to take it at him. Let's see which one goes back to his corner in better shape. Oh, Kenny Ocean with a flurry to the body. Like I said, Kenny is definitely the most, ex the, the more experienced opponent, so he's going to take his time. But Don is, you know, this is his first elite fight, so he's, gonna, he's very excited. He's in his hometown, so he's going to be very active. What a terrific show this one has been tonight. Strong Island Boxing. RG and JG at ringside. Wow. This is, do you call that hometown advantage? You hear everybody? <laughs> I wonder what Kenny Ocean, what's going through Kenny Ocean's head, you know, hearing everybody chant uh, Derek. Headgear came out. They got the head guard fixed, and we continue. Beautiful right here tonight. by Perdon. And 
end of that round. Look at that. The strength that is being used in. You know, that was a very hard round to score, but I'm going to give it to Perry Jones because he pushed the pace a little bit more, and he just moved. Every time he got an inside, he just moved his hand. You know, that was a no real big punch from him, but he just looked as the busier guy. Now, if you look across the ring at Kenny Ocean, and we're going to try to get our SBC cameras on Kenny Ocean. He's got his arms on the rope. When you work with a, a fighter in the corner, you tell him to get your hands off the ropes. I always tell him, put your hands down, let your blood circulate. I feel like when you put your hands on the ropes, you're just stopping the circulation. And you're not as relaxed. You know, so I definitely, I always tell my fighters, put your hands down. And stay relaxed. Let the blood rush to your arms. Too many fighters put their arms up on the ropes, and especially if they need it, no good. They show the other guy how tired they are. Oh, beautiful left hook that I put down. Definitely, whoever lands a, bit, a shot like this is going to go to sleep because they're throwing bombs. Derek Padone in the blue trunks. Yeah, he, Ooh, beautiful every, right here. everything he's throwing is designed to knock yes. Kenny Ocean into a different zip code. Yes, I would like to see Padone come in behind a jab and don't, not, not smother himself as much because he is explosive. Referee can't even break him up. <laughs> heavyweight ref having trouble with the heavyweight. I hope these ropes, these guys are right above us here, right above our strong. Oh, big right hand by Perdon. Big right hand. I don't know, I think that hurt Ocean. I think that hurt Ocean. This really is a The referee joke. might take a point away from someone here. This is a show for the ages. Christian Vasquez has really outdone himself with this show. From the first fight to the last fight, action packed for sure. Yep, and this is the last fight of the night. The first one started strong, the last one is this way. And just about every other bout in between was a terrific bout. You know, I would like to see Ocean give himself a little bit more space. He's smothering himself a little bit too much. The referee has to talk to each guy right now. Stay there. That, this is exactly what the referee has to do. He's taking a point away from each of them. No, the referee is taking control, so that's good. Beautiful work about Perdon. See, that's one thing about Perdon. When he gets to the inside, he's going to work. He's going to move his hand. And that's what you're seeing right now. Every time he gets to the inside, he's going to work. Both Beautiful. About, they're both, now they're both throwing. This is what I wanted to see. Just let your hands go. Nice shot to the body. I think Ocean pulling this round out with some nice body shot. Final bell. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and we both say it. I think that Kenny Ocean is going to win this bout. There's no question in my mind that Derek Padone threw some very impressive looking shots. 
but I don't think he landed the effective shots. I think the effective shots were landed by Kenny Ocean. And I think that Kenny will come away with the victory in this fight. So if you happen to be scoring at home, which many of you guys do, how did you have it scored? I had a 30-27 for Kenny Ocean. You know, I actually got Perdon winning. I got Perdon winning. You got Perdon winning. I, I think he's being more effective in the inside. So let's see. See how the judges are going. Wow, they are just winging wow. shots. But then again, I, Ocean needs to give himself. It's too much holding. They're definitely feeling the last round. See, this is where I think that Kenny's pulling it out. They're gonna take a point away from from promotion again. Now, what is that for? For holding. Oh, big right hand by Ocean. You know, I, I just don't believe in any battle. You take a point away from a guy that could change the course of the fight. I think Ocean needs to finish strong right here. He landed a good left hook. Good left hook by Ocean. It hurt. It hurt Perdon. He landed a great left hook. Now he needs to give himself some space and jump on him. Perdon with his hands. Oh, good left hook. But being pounded to the body. He had. He definitely has him hurt. See, this now has Ocean Lobert. Oh, this is. They gotta go for broke now. Remember, I said that word slobber knocker. This has become a slobber knocker. Nah, nah. Oh, the fight is even now. Nah. I don't believe on that. I really think the referee has lost control of this fight. They disqualified them. Kenny Ocean got disqualified. Okay, Hunter, what was that? I, I, I really have no idea. Um, they, something about holding elbow, I really don't know. It's not clear. You know, it, it was just a very... Uh, Dirty fight, you know. I, I would have let them keep going. You know. I just, I just think in that third round, the referee just lost control. Oh yeah. I frequently go to seminars. I when I was commissioner, I used to give seminars, and I said from the first sign that there's going to be rough stuff you got to step in and stop it yes, right yes. then and there you know sometimes when guys are getting exhausted that's when a lot of the ugliness I, I think out. that's I think that's what was happening here you know it was 
you had two guys coming at each other that would get entangled, you know. Is it, is it a fortunate ending, you know? As a result of an disqualification and new with a, a hard fought victory over Derek Padone. What a show this one's been tonight. And I do mean what a show. It was a great night of boxing for sure. Great night of boxing. And I, I would tell you, I mean, I feel bad for a few of the fighters, yes. like Rebecca Goldberg, you worked with her. I think Alex Makuku came all the way over from New Zealand. Yes. Possibly won his fight, but the, we saw it that way. But the judges yeah. didn't. Two of the judges did. They saw it the other way. But aside from that, every fighter gave everything. What a, a terrific night! And maybe we could, maybe we could end it with an interview with our new heavyweight champion, Kenny Ocean, who's going to first speak to the the crowd. Yo, Lee! Yo! Which one? Taking pictures, the new champ taking pictures. The crowd on its feet here on an incredible night of boxing. At Stereo Garden in Patchogue. Where a standing room only crowd has watched the second Strong Island Boxing Show SBC Championships. An unbelievable night of boxing. And, uh, thank you all for coming tonight. Our new champion, Kenny Ocean, coming over to us. He's trying to find a way out of the ring. He went over to the, the neutral corner, didn't see any steps. But let me go over this way. The new heavyweight champ coming over to us. Joining us at ringside to end the coming. show. Let's see if we, I know the doctor's gotta take a look at it. They're all busy taking pictures. They got to get over to us. So Kenny, get in here. Put the headset on. How we doing, guys? How you doing, Derek? Congratulations. Good. Congratulations. Thank you, guys. An unfortunate end, to, you know, to a fight. You know? Yeah, you know, it was a rough Derek, fight. Pardon. It was a, it was a rough fight. Uh, what was going on in there? You know, every time you guys got in the inside. Yeah, man. Uh, we both are holding. I'll, I'll say I was holding too. That's a big boy. Uh, I lost a couple of close people in this camp. Had a couple of close deaths, and it uh, didn't go as good as I wanted to go. I was worried about me. So I came in, and I'll hang with anybody. I'll always go in there. Because I got heart like no other, man. Your opponent is one strong dude. I, I mean, weighed at 211 pounds today. I'm sure he's up like 250. But going into that third round, see, I thought it was your fight. I thought you'd taken the fight. Then it started getting very ugly. Yeah. What was going on? In just tiredness, man. Uh, I know he was tired. Just I felt I landed a flush six. And he's an experienced fighter. Experienced fighter, he knew how to survive in there, and that's that's my yeah. next. I've only been boxing a year and a half. I'm 22 years old, so I uh, gonna work at this hard, man. Hopefully, this is my. Future. You know, this was uh first elite fight. You know, first. Yeah, my fight. first elite class. Uh, I saw you were starting out very strong instead of taking your time a little bit. You know, in in, in the future, you know. Absolutely. In the elite, you want to take your time a take little it bit down more. Down you know? You're very explosive. You know, work behind that jab. You fought a great fight today, you know? But you want to take your time a little bit more. Now, speaking about, you know, you're the champion now. Yes, sir. You know, um, we, we want to see you more. 
there's a match out there that I want to see again. Yes, and uh, you know, Josh Popper. It, it's, it's a great. Josh it's Popper, a great, I know you're listening. It's a great fight. Where you know? are you, buddy? You know, it was, Where are you? You know, it's it's a match everybody wants. You know, and he hasn't been, even seen my best yet, sir. It's been two great fights. Nobody has. I, and definitely the, th the third one, I think, will be great. Definitely now. Hopefully September 30th. I know he's listening. I know he's watching. Josh Popper, September 30th, Strong Island. Is it, are you going to be boxing? I will be defending this belt if he accepts the challenge. Popper. If he wants to accept the challenge, absolutely. And if not, would you take a rematch with Kenny? Absolutely. Kenny's a good dude. You know, I didn't get to talk to him much. Maybe we get to talk to each other a little after. So I hope so. You know, you did a great fight. You Thank you, good. guys. You know, keep it up and, you know, keep getting better. I appreciate that. You were doing so great on the inside. I, I thought you won every round in that fight. I thought the referee lost a little bit of control with it. I'm going to say something to the referee. Which one? This one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what he was doing? And that's experience, too. They learn all these tricks, which I'm still so new to, and that I have to shout out my boy, Ralph Clemente, and all the guys back at Bombos. Brian Ford, awesome fight. Colin Ford, a great fight. We're all a bunch of dogs, man. We're all learning together. Okay, you're the, Ralph. New, you're the new champ now. What are you going to do with the belt? What are you going to... Are you going to put it on the wall in a frame? And a, what are you going to do with that? I'm going to go out to dinner with it, I think. <laughs> the first <laughs> belt of many, I hope, you know? Derek Padone. Thank you, guys. My brother. Thank you, guys. I appreciate Thank that. Thank you so It's nice meeting you guys. You That's too. That. Derek Padone, Derek the Padone. new champ. Thank you, guys. What a show oh, man, this one has been tonight. I, go to I can't say enough uh, about uh, the entire show tonight. Definitely a great show. Jose Guzman, it's been an absolute pleasure. Did you have half as much fun as I did? Wow, man! It was an exciting night of boxing, and this is this is what we this is what I live for. I love it. That makes two of us been doing this a long time, and when I get at ringside with a guy like you, who's got the same enthusiasm as I did 50 years ago, 55 years ago when I started in this game, and when I see guys like Derek Padone and all the rest of the guys that we saw tonight, what a show it was! We want to thank our promoter Christian Vasquez for one incredible night for Strong Island Boxing I appreciate you. at the Stereo Man, Garden, for everybody at the Stereo Garden.